in the land of YouTube. What's going on, YouTubers? What's going on in the land of YouTube land? What's the fun thing to talk about today? What are you doing? Where are you? What are you doing with your day today? What's going on, Playboy? What's going on? So, you know, just before I get, I don't want to get too off track here before this talk begins. As you know, Charlie and I are on the road. Charlie, are we on the road right now? Charlie, are we on the road? Are we going somewhere, Charlie? Are we going? Why do all the trolls leave when I come in? I want you trolls to stay and have a conversation. Charlie Little Beer. Charlie Little Beer. Are you over there pant pouting because you're not getting the attention you want to sit on my lap? Is that what it is? Let me clean this off real quick, guys. Just real fast. Just real fast. What is going on out there in the land of... I got this hat at this truck stop. I saw it had like a rainbow thing on it. And since uh, I like the cactus, and then everybody calls me gay, so I just thought I would get this hat that has a rainbow on it. <laughs> so, what's up, Playboy? Where is everybody from? Chucky P's in the hizzy. What's going on, Chucky P? Do we got the tribe in here? What's going on, tribe? How you doing? Good to see everybody. Good to see everybody. Greg's in the house. What's up, Greg? Did you guys see, uh, Greg, I put up uh, your donation. I put everybody's donations up yesterday. Uh, uh, this morning, I put them up. Troll Hunter's in the room. What's going on, tribe? How you doing? Tim C, what's going on? Tim C out there in McAllister, Oklahoma. What is going on out there in the land of YouTube? So everybody, do me a favor. I need everybody to do me a favor. Hit the number one, no matter if you're watching this tomorrow or the next day, hit the number one and let me know where you're watching from. Just do that for me real fast. And then hit the like button. There's only 30 likes on here hit the like button just real quick hit the like button it'll take you five seconds take you i'm not even fully awake yet I, uh, charlie and i slept on the interstate we pulled over and slept he is a pouting little boy today because he wants more attention he's pouting everybody hit the number one button let me know where you guys are watching from where is everybody at today where's everybody at and then hit the gosh dang like button there's only 56 likes we got to get more likes on youtube we gotta get you know pretty soon there's gonna be a day we look back and go you remember when you have to ask to ask people to like your thing on youtube right it's so silly but I, before i get too far off track good to see you virginia good to see everybody kayla what's going on how are you cj what's going on good to see everybody jonathan mitchell music jmm is in the hizzy eric Trullo, good to see you eric Dan, good to see you, Dan. How you doing, Dan? What's going on, Playboy? BC Transparency is in the hizzy. What's going on? Man, what a morning. So, okay, let's get into it first step by step. Let's make sure that we only come, we have two, two real subjects to cover, and then I'll go into the third one later as soon as I get these first two subjects covered. So the first one is Deborah Rogers, everybody. Thank you, everybody who donated to Deborah. We raised almost a thousand bucks almost a thousand bucks we raised just by people putting in five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 50 bucks. Some people put in a hundred. Tim over there put in a hundred bucks. Uh, Todd threw in some money. Um, um, Miguel threw in some money. Uh, you know, I got your, uh, uh, another friend threw in some Zelly money that I crossed off his name. He doesn't want any recognition for his donation for what he did for Deborah. So the very first thing is a heartfelt thank you to all of you who donated to her. I talked to her on the phone this morning for 30 minutes and she was in, in tears, so grateful because you guys don't understand, she's nickel and dime in every penny and don't feel free to drop her another five or 10 bucks if you guys would be so inclined. Oh God, okay, come on, come on, that's a good boy. Come over here, stop pouting, come over here. You don't get to bring the bone, you just, just bring it, come on, come on. Th then stay over there if you're gonna bring the bone, forget it. I'm, I, I'm not gonna do both. You can't bring the bone and come over. You can't bring the bone and come over, all right? So this is not how it works. The bone is there, you get the bone or you get my lap, which do you want? You don't get the bone and my lap. No, 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 dog, no. Nah. No, nah, it's not how it works, it's not how it works. So um, don't be uh, shy if you wanna throw Deborah five bucks. Remember, this woman doesn't have a job. She has no income. <laughs> she has no money. She has no money. She has no money. Jesus. I hate to say it, but it's so true. She doesn't have an income. She needs our help. And we're going to see it through. And she's going to fight this all the way, tooth and nail, all the way to the bone. So, uh, are there any Ironton people in here? Don't talk to pigs. 
Don't talk to pigs. Vic Ferrari's in here. Good to see you. Oh, Chase, you got timed out. I'm so sorry to hear that, brother. Rick, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Delete comments. How you doing, buddy? Good to see you. Uh, I'm a little bit bloated and ugh, just because I've been on the road for two days driving. You know, it's just like, oh, just been driving. So then let's, let's, this brings me to the next topic of conversation. Um, Bradley Spuljarek, call me. I'm not joking, Bradley. Call me. You, listen, you know, everybody knows that I like Bradley. Everybody knows that I like him. I don't dislike Bradley Spuljarek as a person. I don't. But who here, let me ask a very important question, okay? Let me ask you a question. You know, even the trolls, let me ask you a question. Do you think he was dealing drugs on the Ironton Police Department alone? Do you think he was doing those things by himself? Yes or no? One for yes, I think he was dealing drugs alone, or two, if he had cops helping him. One for yes, I think he was doing it all alone. Yes alone is number one. Two, no, he was using other pigs. I mean, other police. Sorry about that. Every once in a while, the truth slips out. So how many people think he was? Two, if you think he had other people. If there's more than one person, hit the number two. If it's only Brad Spuljarek dealing drugs in Ironton, hit the number one button. How many of you guys think it was just Brad? Just Brad. Hit the Brad was dealing drugs. Brad. And by the way, um, you check his Facebook post. You check his Facebook post, and he was he was he 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 just recently posted something on Facebook that said that look at this huge drug bust we just did. You don't think Bradley took some of those drugs? You don't think he took some? Because I do. And and by the way, I don't have a problem with drugs. I think the drug should be totally legal. I don't think Bradley Spuljarek should be going to jail other than being a, a corrupted pig. You know, he's corrupt. Of course he is, they all are. You've given them absolute autonomy, absolute power over all of us. And so Bradley Spuljarek was corrupted by the system of which he signed up to be in. He signed up to do that. He signed up. Ooh, he signed up for that shit. Oh, I could feel it. I need to get a workout in today. I got to get my workout in. I just feel my energy is just, you know, and I hate being on the road for two days. I get puffy. I don't feel good, you know, but, but listen, Bradley Spuljarek did not work alone in Ironton to deal drugs. Is that true or false? And then Todd Norton just said he won't go to jail. That's what he just said. He won't go to jail. Okay, so now the charges, it started, matter of fact, let me, let me call a friend here. Let me call a friend. Let me call a friend. Let me, let, I, cause, cause remember I'm always doing stuff. So I don't always have all the full 411. Whereas um, Jeffrey uh, from Rights On, he's gonna have a little bit more. Hey. Jeffrey, I got you on speakerphone with 300 people. I just wanted to talk to you a little bit. How you doing buddy? I'm doing good, doing good. So everybody, this is Rights On. His channel is called Rights On. If someone will drop his link down in the in the, in the the comments. Uh, this is Jeffrey from Rights On. He's definitely a friend to me. He's a friend of mine, 100%. He's remained a loyal friend. Hey, Kim, how you doing? So, you know, uh, what were the initial charges for Bradley Spuljarek, Jeffrey? Um, it was domestic abuse. Oh, so that goes- Domestic violence. Domest yeah. Domestic violence. So that yeah. goes right along the lines with, you know, two out of five cops beat their wives. So, Absolutely. so apparently Bradley got physical with his wife in some way. Would that be, would that be, I don't want to assume anything. I want to, you know, she called 911 on him. Is that right? Apparently, yeah, there was a report made um, to Lawrence County Sheriff's Office. Ironton Police Department was notified in the AM in the AM of that day. So they, 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 they notified the Ironton Police Department in the AM, and then, yeah. of course, Ironton PD went out there immediately and arrested him, correct? No, they waited till nighttime when uh, Lawrence County Sheriffs were on their way there. From what I understand, from people on the ground there. Oh, I see. So, so I really wish I could get uh, Tim Lyons on the phone. I'm not sure if Tim's at work today. I'd like to get Jeebus Crisp on the phone as well and see if... Yeah. Uh, David I'm Turner's to find out something too. They they just put out a presser and said that he's on administrative leave, but we're not sure if that's paid leave or not. Oh, because when I get busted for drugs at my job, they give me a paid leave. Isn't that what happens to everybody here? Uh, Hit a number one if you get paid leave. 
push number one, you get paid leave if you get arrested for drugs. Hit a number one or hit a number two if no, you don't get paid leave. Hit a number one if you get a paid leave, everybody. Hit a number two if you don't get paid leave, if you beat your wife and get caught with 20 grams of meth and eight grams of fentanyl. Hey, Jeffrey, I'm not real familiar with the barbiturate world. I just don't have a lot of experience in it. But can you help me out with something? Is eight grams of fentanyl enough to kill a man? Oh, that's enough to kill a lot of people. Oh, so he, so then if you have eight grams of fentanyl, you're cutting that up into how much meth? How, how, far, how, anybody done any drugs that could give us the answer? How far does eight grams of fentanyl go? It's probably enough to wipe out a neighborhood. Probably enough to wipe out an entire neighborhood. So, Bradley Spuljarek. Number one killer in our country right now. Drugs, no. Even cops are getting thrown by the wayside because of this stuff when they're finding it in people's cars. Wow. You know, my friend Casey Durkin. Uh, I don't want to cry, but Casey Durkin died last year at the end of the year from an overdose of fentanyl when she was doing cocaine with some friends. And uh, she's a very good friend of mine, been a friend of mine for almost 20 years. And she died from a drug overdose of fentanyl. And uh, I tell you, I, 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 there, was, there was a couple weeks there I cried myself to sleep every single night because Casey Durkin's was this bright, bright, bright light. And uh, and, and and so how much is how much is eight how much is eight grams of fentanyl? What does that really end up looking like as far as killing people? I'm not really sure. Maybe somebody can look it up in the chat. I know it will wipe out a lot of people. Yeah. So Bradley Spuljarek had eight grams of fentanyl. And Bradley, I know you're gonna watch this. I know you're gonna hear about this, dude. I, I want you to call me. I want to help you. They're gonna now now Jeffrey, tell me what they're doing with the charges because if I got caught beating my wife with eight grams of fentanyl and 20 grams of meth. What do the charges look like now for Bradley Spuljarek? Well, it looks like his domestic violence was dropped to a misdemeanor now. Oh, really? His, his domestic violence was, was dropped to a misdemeanor. Is that... Right. Wow, that is just violence already involvement. How did they drop the charges from a felony to a misdemeanor overnight? How'd that happen? Uh, well, I guess uh, Brigham is handling the case. It's because Lawrence County District Attorney is handling it. Is that right? Do you think that's a conflict of interest? Do you th hold, hold on, hold on. I mean, is that a conflict of interest that 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 Brigham Anderson, who works hand in hand? With the, I mean, where is BCI? I mean, this amazing Bureau of Criminal Investigations. Where's BCI? Where are they at during all this? Isn't BCI supposed to take over an investigation and bring in a special prosecutor? They should. They should, right? Because Brigham yeah. Anderson, he must know Bradley Spuljarek, right? Yeah. So they must be associated in some way through the through the through the injustice system there in Ironton. Is that right? Yeah, I would say so. So, Br so Brigham Anderson is gonna is gonna take the case. Brigham, you have no ethics. You are a t total pig, Brigham. You are disgusting, Brigham Anderson. You charge all these people with tampering and trafficking, but yet Bradley Spuljarek's felony domestic violence is already knocked down to a misdemeanor, and we haven't even had a pretrial meeting. How does that happen? How's that happen? I mean, Jeffrey, let me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me ask you a question. So can you kind of give us the play-by-play -play for people who don't know exactly what happened? So when did Bradley's wife call 911 on him and say, yet another pig, is, yet another police officer is beating his wife? When did that happen? Do you know? Um, from, from the accounts, it says that the call came in in the morning. In the morning hours. In the morning hours. So that means yeah. that Bradley Spuljarek was somehow, and, and, and let me, you know what? Let, let, you know, I hate to give Bradley the benefit of the doubt, but anytime there's a domestic violence call, you know, and with cops, you, you got to kind of lean toward that cops beat their wives because they go yeah. home, they can't get it up, so they can't bust a nut. So then they only get off on beating people in handcuffs. And so then Bradley Spuljarek is, is, goes home, you know, he can't get it up. 
because he, he gets off on beating people. And then uh, there, since his wife isn't in handcuffs, you know, obviously he wants to beat her and throw her in handcuffs. So, <laughs> this is all jokes, guys. I'm just joking. But but I got to be careful what I say just because I want to try to keep it legitimate. But apparently in the wee hours of the night, three, four, five o'clock in the morning, okay, uh, what happened was Bradley's wife called 911 and said, he's beating me. Now, did she turn over the evidence or was that somebody else? I'm not sure. Not sure yet. Mm-hmm. 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 So now, now, now I've lost a day here. Today's Thursday or today's Friday? Today's Thursday. Today's Thursday. Okay. So today's, I've just lost a day as I've traveled for the last couple of days. So, so now Bradley Spooljeric, you know, and just, so, just so everybody knows, um, People are, people are gonna talk shit about me all they want, but I've never been convicted of dealing drugs. I've never been, I, I've never had a charge against me that stuck for having anything to do with dealing drugs. I've never pled guilty to dealing drugs or having anything to do with being a drug dealer. So I, it's just, you know, the, the trolls and the haters, I, I pled a, a, a diversion program for possession of a substance. Not, I never, I never pled I never pled anything for dealing drugs. I never had. So this is what I'm talking about. The difference between judging me and then judging what you're actually seeing. There was no eight grams of meth, of fentanyl in my house. There was no uh, 20 grams of, of uh, methamphetamines in my house. There was none of those things. I literally had a possession of a controlled substance enough for one personal usage. Just, just if we're comparing the two, just be honest about it. Bradley Spooljarek got caught with eight grams of fentanyl that could kill a hundred people. That never happened to me. I don't have anything like that. I've never been caught with anything like that. There's no smoking gun. No, no woman has ever called 911 on me and said that I was beating her. That's never happened in my life. Not once. No one has ever had to call the police on me to get help for me kicking the shit out of them. But it sounds like Bradley Spooljarek's wife had to call 911 because he was physically aggressively violent with her. I don't have any of those things. There's no 911 calls on me in the history of my 47 years on earth. In the history of my 47 years on earth. Okay, that doesn't exist. That just simply doesn't exist. Meanwhile, though, Bradley Spooljarek, his wife calls and says, he's beaten me. Then they catch him with eight grams of fentanyl and, and, <laughs> and 20 grams of methamphetamines. I've never done meth, so I don't know what it's like, but it doesn't sound don't like forget, very- Don't forget tampering with evidence too. Oh, he got charged with tampering? Yeah, tampering so, with a felony. So that's a pretty normal thing. That's a pretty normal thing in Ironton, which by the way, you know, uh, as much as I don't respect Bradley Spooljarek, as much as I don't respect police, as much as, you know, I still care about the man and I don't think any person should go to a dungeon for a chemical. You just shouldn't. Now, if you use a chemical that kills people, then, then what happens? And by the way, you guys, everybody should reach out. We should get a hold of Spooljarek's wife. We should have a conversation with Spooljarek's wife. I'd like to ask Brad Spooljarek's wife if he hit her. I, I just want to know if he hit her because I don't have anything like that. I mean, we know about that, that fat piece of shit, Josh Abrams. I mean, she's on the record saying, look what this piece of shit did to my face. You know, it's so funny how they hold me up to scrutiny, Jeffrey, but there's not a smoking gun on me yet. They choose to look the other way on Josh's attempted rape and on Bradley Spooljarek's domestic violence. Is, is there allegiance with justice or is there is allegiance just with blue team versus silver team? Oh, it's, it's, all, it's all about the blue team. Right, right, right. Yeah, Jonathan Spooljarek was the one who that uh, that girl said that he he slept with her in high school. That's what that girl said. And and we synthesized her voice. Jonathan Spooljarek is the one who beat Kent Freeman in the doorway of his own home. So there's that Jonathan Spooljarek. And then we said, well, Bradley wasn't bad. He wasn't involved in these things. But now we're finding out how long has he been beating his wife? Does anybody know that information? How long has he been beating his wife? Does anybody know that? Can anybody in Ironton let me know how long? How, how long has Bradley's wife been saying to friends and family that this guy's beating me? Because by the way, you know, Jeffrey, uh, when, when someone's being abused, 
they typically will tell their best friend, their brother, their cousin, their mother. They will leak that information. Yeah. You see? Yep. You see what I'm saying? So. Actually, it becomes too much and then they crack. Right. 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 So, so we don't know how long he was beating her then, in other words, is what you're saying. No, we don't know yet. Uh-huh. And then, you know, we were talking earlier um, about uh, Tina Slay Richardson. You said she's going around collecting money. Is that right? Oh, yeah. She's the money. She, she got a team of investigators now and a team of lawyers. <laughs> um, all, the, all the troll channels are getting her money so she can get this, this team together. She openly said it on, in the chat and on the panel. Tina, what team are you talking about? Because what it takes is it takes you going after the murderers of your son. It takes you not hiring a team of investigators. All they want is more money. They don't want to actually get the justice. They want your money. It has to be you that chases down the killers of your kid. So that's what Tina's doing. So Tina's going around and this, she's accusing me of being a grifter and she's going around to collecting little bits of money for people as she just goes on panel after panel after panel. To get the killers who killed your son, you gotta put boots on the ground and spend time going after that. So so why why is Tina, who's she paying? Do, do we have a list of the people she's paying? I didn't see any list, no. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I guess, I guess, you know, but, you know, this has been a recurring theme, just so you know. When people accuse me of anything, if you actually take a look at them, that's exactly what they're doing. That's what they're doing. You know, you go back to even on my TikTok days, all those guys accused me of this and that. And then you check and they had their PayPal, their Venmo, their Cash App ready to yeah. go. So we're, we're, we're looking at... Uh, all around corruption where people have devoted themselves to people accused of rape, to people who are accused wife beaters, to people who get caught with 20 grams of, of meth and eight grams of fentanyl. But yet the guy going around driving in his van from city to city helping people who get abused by cops, I'm the villain, I'm the bad guy. I wonder how that is. I went to go help Tina. The only reason people know who Tina is is because I went there to help her. And now she's grifting money. And where's that money going? We really don't know. I got a team of people. Who says that? Who says that? There's no team of people. It's up to you to get anything done. Deborah, we raised that thousand bucks for her, 950 bucks. We did that by putting our boots on the ground, turning on a camera and going after it. You have to chase things down like, like, like a hound. I mean, you've got to be hardcore to get anything accomplished. And if you're not hardcore, then nothing will get accomplished. You can't hire, Jeffrey, I, I love you, buddy. I can't hire you to do my video editing and think you're going to do it as good as me. You won't. It's up to me, right? Yeah, yeah, you, you got to put your heart into it. You got to put your, your heart into it. That's right. You got to put your heart and soul into the things that you do, especially when it comes to the death of your son. You got to chase that down. You got to be on the street in Patterson's face, in Sheriff Jeff Arnott's face, Jim Arnott. You got to go chase those guys down and expose them, expose their connections, expose their corruption. You know, you, you can't just, you can't just uh, sit on your hands and say, oh, I hired someone with funds being raised by troll channels. And now she's a great big cop sucker, cop lover again. When I was with her, she hated cops, hated all cops, couldn't wait to get away from cops, wanted to defund all cops. But now she's decided to, to change her tune and now cops are her friend and Chad Goo's her best buddy. Uh, Chad Goo's the guy who, who uh, Beth Riss claimed, you made that video, right, Jeffrey? Yeah. Uh, Beth Risk claimed that Chad Gu punched a guy in the back of the neck when he was in handcuffs. Yeah. And how, how does anybody back that? You have an eyewitness who was a cop for 15, 20 years on the scene saying she saw him punch a guy in handcuffs. But yet, Jeffrey, th these people are being accused of horrific crimes with eyewitnesses who are crying foul. This person wronged me. And yet the people talk shit about me and there's not one receipt, not one person standing in front of the camera saying he wronged me. There's no eyewitness. 
There's no eyewitness saying I saw Chili punch a guy in the back of the neck when he was in handcuffs, but there is against Chad Goo, but yet these people just turn a blind eye to eyewitnesses. I don't understand it. Can you help me understand from, from a more of lying blindness. Uh-huh. Just lying blindness. They're just lying. They're just outright yep, they lying. Back blue, they back blue them and they think one day when they get in trouble, they'll lean on them. That's what I feel. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it's just this simple. Let me ask the 450 people here listening now, okay? A cop has been accused and caught with 20 grams of meth and 8 grams of fentanyl. He was accused by his wife of beating her, okay? Do I have anything like that? Jeffrey, have you seen anything like that? No. I mean, do I have anything like that? Is there anything, is there, is there any kind of thing like that? No. Nothing. I got nothing like that. Right. But I'm bad. The guy who signed and swore and promised to uphold the Constitution, that guy gets arrested with eight grams of fentanyl, 20 grams of meth, and his wife is calling 911 saying he beat me. But he's the good guy and I'm the bad guy. I caused this, right? I did this, right, Jeffrey? I made him deal drugs, right? That's right. You made him do it. You yeah. made him all look bad. All the cops look bad. You did it all on your own. Right. They're, they're not doing this to themselves. They're, they're, not, they're not creating this, this horrifically bad brand for themselves by being absolute tyrants. It's me. I did this. I did this. Is that right? That's right. That's right. I did it. I caused all the corruption. And so, you know, now that we got 425 people in here, let's just take a real quick poll. Press one if you think Bradley has, is dealing drugs in Ironton alone. Press two if you think the other cops are helping him. Press one if you think Bradley is dealing drugs alone. And press two if you think there's more than one cop dealing That's drugs. funny you should say that, you know? It's funny you should say that because get ready for the McKnight story. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, yeah. What's going yeah. on with McKnight? Well, there's, a, there's some people I talked to in Ironton, and I, and I want to thank them because they're afraid to speak out. They're afraid. So they look to guys like us. They put their word out for them. But apparently the story's being spun now that it was McKnight's drugs. The bust happened at McKnight's house and that Bradley was sleeping at McKnight's house. Anybody from uh, anybody from Ironton can can confirm that. So so now what Jeffrey from Rights On is saying right here, he's saying that Bradley Spuljerick was asleep over at McKnight's house. McKnight had the. Did, are you saying that McKnight had the drugs at his house? That's what they're saying. They're saying Bradley took the fall for McKnight now. Brad took the fall for McKnight. Yeah, two different people messaged me the same thing. I'm gonna. I, I'm. Gonna, I don't know if Tim Lyons is available, but I'm just gonna call him. Hold on, Jeffrey. I'm. I'm gonna. Oh, I gotta run. I gotta run, but call him. Call okay. Him. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay, buddy. Thanks for your time today. Uh, you that's you. rights on, everybody. Post his link. Make sure everybody uh, uh, follows rights on. Thanks a lot, rights on. Love you, Bye, buddy. So I'm giving Tim Lyons a call here, real quick, to see if he has any more information. Bradley Spuljerick, call me. Give me a call. You think I'm kidding? I'm not kidding. I am not kidding. Uh, give me a call, Bradley. I'd like to help you because they're going to try to soft. I'm trying to call you, Tim Lyons. I don't know if I can reach you or not. Uh, I'll try one more time, see if I can reach him. He may be at work. I'm not sure if it rained over there in Ohio, but rights on, not rights in. I'm trying to call him again here. Let's see. Let's see if we can reach Tim over there in the Ironton area. And now, uh, you know, Tim didn't do this. Bradley Spuljerick did this. Hey, Tim, I got you on speaker. I got 400 people listening. This is Tim Lyons, everybody. He was uh, original. Up, he was. So uh, I, I might lose service. I'm on my way home from work. Um, so I just got a, a message from a really good friend of mine. He doesn't want to go public, but uh, he's been listening to the show. And he's got a question for you. Yeah. Um, he said he was on the she told somebody that I know that Small Jarek's been living with McKnight. That they've been, you know, staying together. And that uh, they got a warrant for McKnight's house after... Are you still there? I'm listening. Okay. 
So they got a warrant for McKnight's house, and that's where they found all the shit at. Was at McKnight's house. Oh, so it is more than one. So, so, but they went to now. You, you're, you're the person who told you this. They're sure that they went to McKnight's house to arrest Bradley. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, they're positive. He said it's one hundred percent fact. Wow, wow. So, you know, that's what I know, and uh, man. I mean, when and, uh, when does BCI? Go ahead. He went to his wife's house to see his kids and got into a fight with his wife. And his wife called and turned him in. And they got a warrant for McKnight's house. And they went to McKnight's house. And that's where they got in. And so Spoljeric took the blame so that, you know, nobody else would get in trouble. Because apparently, you know, there's a few of them that's in on this shit. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They listen, need to be exposed, man. Listen, and just so you guys know... Uh, Tim on the phone here, Tim Lyons, who was originally persecuted, it's called the Sarah Page story, but it could be called easily the Sarah Page and Tim Lyons story. He was persecuted by McKnight. McKnight stole his wallet. We know what happened. We know the whole story. But this is Tim Lyons on the phone, everybody. And so, you know, you don't have to believe Tim that more than one cop is involved. You can just read the Mullen Commission. It's available on my website for free. All the trolls, everybody hit the like button, everybody hit the like button, and then all the trolls go to deletelaws.com and download the Mullen Commission. And what it says is that the biggest drug dealers in America are cops. They are the number one drug gang in the United States. They're number one, and it's not even close. And so, you know, when you tell me that he was holding up over there with McKnight and that, 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 they were, they, I mean, it sounds like, I don't want to say anything, but it sounds like they were in on this together. If McKnight knew the drugs were there, why would you allow, listen, if you brought well, eight. Listen to this. So there's a lot of people in the area that have been overdosing on what they're calling hot shot. And uh, I'm going to put a woman in contact with you, Jilly. I, I don't know if she might want to remain confidential then because um, she's, she's afraid of these dudes, but it's the Lawrence County Sheriff's Department involved in this. Really? But, uh, there's a hotel in South Point called the Country Heart Inn. I'm sorry, there's, a, there's a hotel in South Point called what? Country Heart Inn. Country Heart Inn. Is, I mean, people are dropping like flies from drug overdoses. And when they do the coroner reports, they're finding out that they're, they're given a hot shot. And, you know, like people will be in their room with them and they're, they're given a lethal dose of fentanyl and meth. It, 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 in their and room it's right just, there? Isn't it ironic that that's the two drugs that they found on this cop? It's the same two drugs that you mix together for a lethal dose and kill someone? Really? So the exact drugs that people are overdosing from in a hotel called the, what's it called again? That hotel? What was that name of that hotel, guys? It, uh, the Hearth? You got me, Tim, or did you cut out? The Hearth Inn? Yeah, I'm about to lose service, man. I'll probably have to call you when I get to the house. But what's the name of that hotel? It's called the County Sheriff's Department, and they're like 20 miles away. <laughs> so, no, so that makes sense. It, it doesn't make any sense. And when Aaron Bollinger's question about what we, 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 uh, you know, Sarah's family members. I don't want to. I don't want to say his name, but he died of a hot shot, and there were two people with him in the hotel room. They left there with all his belongings. I mean, even the man's prosthetic leg. You know, he had a fake leg. He was incapable of giving himself a, a, a shot. I mean, you know, like that because he didn't have fingers on his leg. And uh, when we told when we, you know, when we told Aaron Bollinger about that, he said he already knew. And, then, and he got smarter like with no. You're cutting out pretty bad, Tim. You're cutting out pretty bad. Homicide, you know, because it could be. He's gonna cut in and out. I'm gonna I'm gonna end that call real quick. So it's called the Country Hearth Inn. I, uh, Tim cut out. It's called the Country Hearth Inn in South Point. You know, why is there a drug hotel that everybody knows about, that it's no big secret, that the cops are going to regularly, and people are dying from a deadly combination of meth and fentanyl? 
Why is that? Why is that happening there? And why did Bradley Spuljeric get caught with the exact same drug concoctions that are killing people across the tri-state area and across America? We are allowing this to happen in all the trolls. There's a hundred trolls here right now. Everybody hit the like button. It's only 200 likes and there's 460 people in here. Everybody hit the like button. It'll just take you a second. Make sure you're subscribed. If you haven't gone by delete laws and got a trifold, make sure you have one in your car. I always have one. I have one right here, right next to me right now. So I don't have to talk to cops if I don't want to. But this is the point. You trolls who have taken an allegiance to these cops, an allegiance to people like Tina Slay Richardson. When do you open your eyes and take a look? When do you look at the facts in front of you? The cops are dealing the drugs. Tina's grifting. She's grifting for her son's death. It's disgusting. And people are like, oh, look at Chili, he's a grifter. I'm driving along on fumes. What are you talking about? These troll channels are making tons of money. Tina Slay Richardson's making money on her sympathy, hand over fist, but she's not putting herself on the ground and going after the murderers of Caleb Slay. And that's what has to happen. That's what Craig Ellingson did in Missouri when he went after the murderers of Brandon Ellingson. That's what has to happen. This is ridiculous. I mean, this is ridiculous. It, it, it is the epitome of just idiocracy. If you don't know what idiocracy means, it means when absolutely nothing makes any sense. You guys are watching who the drug dealers are. It's Bradley Spuljeric and McKnight and the cops of Ironton. Not all the cops, I'm sure there's some good cops in there, but you guys are watching it happen. Who beats their wives? Who beats their girlfriends? Cops! Because we created a system where a guy like Bradley, who I've openly admitted that I like his personality, I like him as a dude, I got nothing personal with the guy, you know, he's just a dude, man. He signed up to a corrupted system and now he's a drug dealer. He's a drug dealer. Can, can someone tell me that Bradley Spuljeric is not dealing drugs? Go ahead. Put 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 one for yes, he is a drug dealer. Two for no. Put one for yes, Bradley's a drug dealer. Put two for no. One for yes, Bradley is a drug dealer. And maybe McKnight too. Or two for no, he's not a drug dealer. Do I have eight grams of methamphetamines in here? Do I have 20 grams of meth and eight grams of fentanyl in my car? I mean, one for yes, he's a drug dealer, two for no. One for yes, Bradley Spuljeric is a drug dealer, and two for no. Then, then, okay, so Iron Wolf said no. Iron, why does he have 28 grams of methamphetamines? Why does he have 28 grams? Charlie, Charlie, why does he have 28 grams of methamphetamines? How come he has 28 grams? Why is there 28 grams? Can anybody tell me that? Why is there 28 grams? Why is there 28 grams? Really good movie with, um, uh, with, um, I'm trying to blank on his name now. It's just, it's just, uh, um, you know, and then, uh, you know, you guys, what's really crazy to me is you know, I'm just not going to say anything. I'm just not going to say anything. I'm not going to say anything. I'm going to try to keep my my commentary focused to, you know, Bradley Spuljeric should call me. Bradley, listen, they're going to take it easy on you as far as your criminal charges. But Bradley, tell me the truth, dude. I never have to say your name. Bradley Spuljeric, I'm talking directly to you. Uh, se seven grams, is that what it was called? With, uh, with uh, that super liberal actor. Um, Sean Penn, 20, 20, 22 grams or something like that. What, what's that called? Oh, dude. And listen, just so you guys know, um, I talked to someone else last night on the phone who's, a, who's an Ironton informant, and they told me, um, they told me that, that they've been sleeping with girls at the jail for a very long time that they've been sleeping with women who are drugged out, who are addicted to meth, who are addicted to drugs. That's what the informant told me last night on the phone. 
because I had a conversation about this yesterday with someone before I came live. Of course, a hundred people sent me the Ironton Tribune article that shows Bradley Spuljarek getting arrested. You know, and Bradley should reach out and talk to me. Bradley, listen, you could end up dead, dude. You think I'm joking, Bradley? You could end up dead. I'm not joking. It's easier, Bradley, for them to kill you than keep you alive. And I'm not joking. This isn't a joke. I'm not just I'm not just being hyperbole here. Bradley Spuljarek, your life is in danger. You think I'm kidding? Because the FBI is involved. They're all involved. It's a whole dirty tri-state circle. And it's not just there. It's all across our country. The FBI is involved in the drug dealing. They're, they're a part of it. BCI is involved. BCI is corrupt to the core. I mean, Spooge, they're, they're going to come after you, dude. I don't know how they're going to come after you. They're probably going to try to, I mean, they're going to do everything they can to keep Bradley Spooljarek quiet, not talking to the press, not talking to guys like me. But Bradley, you have the secrets. Dude, come out now. You're only 29 years old, dude. We'll write a book together. It'll be a number one times bestseller. You won't have to worry about money for the rest of your life, Bradley. Sit down with me for a month in LA. I will, I will, I will, I, listen, I will even, I'll do anything you want to do, Bradley. I'll do anything you want to do. Anything you want to do, Bradley, I'll do it with you. Yeah, the FBI, listen, I got confidential informants all over the tri-state area. The FBI is complicit. The FBI is involved in the drug dealing. The FBI is turning people to be informants and then they end up dead with a hot shot. The FBI was involved in Caleb Slay's murder. The DEA was involved in Caleb Slay's murder. And instead of focused on that, Tina's focused on me. Tina, go focus on your dead son. It's sad, pathetic. Now she's making money. She's grifting. You're literally making money. Tina, I'm driving from city to city, state to state, all over America and showing that it's corrupt all the way from top to bottom. Your job is to chase down the killers of your son. That's your job. Not to go on panels and talk about me. You demented chick. Go and worry about Caleb. Good to see you too, autobiography. You know autobiography, I never blocked you, dude. I had a rogue moderator who blocked a bunch of people. I check now the block list every day. I check all of my, 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 my stations every day now. You know, but we're living in what can only be considered absolute idiocracy. Uh, well, if someone would please, good to see you, Tim. Someone would please drop the definition of idiocracy. I'll, I'll look it up right here. Let me read you the actual definition of idiocracy. Define idiocracy. Let me read you the actual definition. A society or group that is controlled by or consists of people of low intelligence. How dumb do you gotta be? Who's the drug dealers in Ironton? It's the cops. Who, when they did that, Bradley Spuljarek put on his Facebook page, we've seized all these drugs. How many of those drugs went into the cops' pockets? You are not an idiot. You don't have to be a freaking genius. Who's stealing the drugs in America? The cops are. Because you don't get to watch them search your car. You don't get to watch the cops search your car. So that means they can take some of the drugs they took from the last bust and plant it here, or they can take half of your drugs and only bust you for half of them, which you're grateful for. You're grateful because now you're not facing the bigger charge, you're facing the littler charge, and the cops stole your drugs, but you're not gonna say anything. And who's stealing the drugs? Bradley, Spuljarek, and McKnight. They're bad cops. What don't you understand? The idiocracy, idiocracy. A society or group that is controlled or consists of people of low intelligence. The people in our current idiocracy deserve whatever they will get. That's the example. You don't have to be a genius, Ironton. The cops are dealing the drugs in your town. Who's spreading the drugs? The cops. And I tr I'm trying. You got, listen, I love people. I love the person who is the pig. I love that person. I don't love the pig. I love people. I care about individual people. 
I care about you. I care about your safety. I care if anything bad happens to you. When I get the email that you got cheated or your brother's in jail, I literally have a moment where I'm like, oh, damn it. You know, Sean DeLong is in jail. Sean DeLong was an informant for me. Now they want to lock him up for 10 years for being a drug addict. When do we stop this? When the cops are the bad people. The cops are the bad ones. Because we're not allowed to film them searching our houses and our cars. Is that the most ridiculous thing you've ever heard? We're not allowed to film the cops searching our homes and searching our cars. They can plant a disc. They can plant a thumb drive. They can plant this much methamphetamines. Well, Bradley Spooljerick had eight grams of fentanyl. So you not, can't really hide that with a little tiny. That's a chunk of drugs. I don't know. I've never seen eight grams of fentanyl. I've never seen eight grams of meth. So I don't know what it looks like. I know what eight grams of cocaine looks like. That's a chunk of cocaine. Eight grams of cocaine is a, that's, that's a, that, that's a, that's a lot of cocaine. I know that. I've seen that in Hollywood. I've definitely seen it. They planted a gun on James Sheets. The people who hate me, hate me all you want. Bradley Spooljerick beats his wife. He was holed up with McKnight. They got caught with 28 grams of chemicals that kill people. Tina Slay Richardson is making money off of her son's death and not chasing it down. She should be in Missouri sitting on Patterson's desk, sitting on Sheriff Jim Arnott's desk. With the money she's making, she should be going after them. I mean, you guys can see it. You guys can see it. It is what it is. I don't want this to be the facts. These are the facts. So all the people here coming here and hating me, I didn't. I haven't been in Ironton in months. I didn't make Bradley Spooljerick have eight grams of, of fentanyl. Did you? Did you do that? Did you make Bradley Spooljerick's wife call 911? And people wonder why I keep my personal life so quiet and under wraps. Look at what happens. Hey there, all you fine folks, not his fine day. I don't really know what that means, Semper Fi, but I don't think it's a very good day for Bradley Spooljerick. Hopefully he's not in a dungeon anymore. Hopefully he's not in a dungeon. I hope he's not in a dungeon. I don't think anybody belongs in a dungeon for drugs. You know, I don't think anybody belongs uh, locked up. I just don't think they do. I'm sorry. I don't, I don't believe that people need to go to a dungeon to make them better. I just don't think it's true. He's without bail, huh? Sad. I'm sorry, Bradley. I'm sorry that this happened to you, dude. That you got you joined a, a Death Star system. I'm sorry you did that. I'm sorry you joined a Death Star system. And then yeah. and then and then you wonder why you are corrupt. Bradley Spooljerick. Let, let me take up for Bradley for a second. No, Iron Wolf, he does not need to be locked up. Locking up people doesn't make society better, it makes society worse. Locking up Bradley Spooljerick isn't going to make him non-corrupted. Bradley Spooljerick is a great way for me to illustrate my point about our incarceration nation. Bradley Spooljerick, unless he beat his wife, and she may have had bruises, shouldn't even be in chains. Bradley Spooljerick should have to be rehabilitated. And the Death Star, the, the dark ship, the evil that is called law enforcement in America needs to be disbanded needs to be disbanded. We don't need law enforcers in our country. We just don't need it. I'm sick of it. I think everybody's sick of it. What's going on, everybody? Everybody hit the one button. Let me know where you guys are watching from. And then let me ask you guys a very important question that I have not asked you yet today. And we need to think about this in this grand scheme of things. Let me ask you this. Where's Waldo? Where's Waldo? Where's Waldo? Where's Waldo? Where's Waldo? Where you at, Waldo, you corrupt pig? Where are you, corrupter? Mr. Corrupt Waldo, where's Waldo? Where's Waldo? Where you at, Waldo? Where you at, Waldo? You're sitting over there trying to figure out a way to get Bradley out of the dungeon? You figuring that out? Is that what you're doing over there? Is that what you're doing? What's going on over there, Mr. Waldo? What's going on over there, Mr. Waldo? Can anybody tell me that? What's going on, Waldo? What are you doing, Waldo? You gonna let him out of the dungeon? I guess he's in Scioto County. 
Oh, and then I, I didn't know it. I didn't know it. I just, I'm just finding, I, I, I'm a little bit late on the, on the uptake on some things, you know, but it's like, why wasn't McKnight arrested? If you find the drugs at McKnight's house, possessions is nine tenths of the law. What's up, Reunite? Good to see you guys. Good to see you, Angie. Nice to see you, Knight Rider, Linkster. What's going on, Launchpad, Andrew? Waldo! Waldo is the, you know, according to the research that we did on solving Ironton, Judge Waldo is right in the thick of the corruption. He's right in the middle of all of it. Toledo! Um, it, it, Judge Waldo is right in the middle of all of this. Yeah, Mike, got a lot of people who are supporters. Look at all the wrenches. These are people who are loyal to change. Not loyal to me, loyal to change. Who wanna change this bullshit system, Mike. Hey Mike, how's the system working out? I mean, maybe you were just just, just saying, look at all the wrenches and you were being nice, that's fine. But Mike, since you, since you spoke up, how is it working out? How's the system working out? How's it going? How are things going? Is it going good? Or when we allow one agency absolute autonomy to search your house and search your car? Because where did Bradley get the money for 28 grams of barbiturates? 20 grams of methamphetamines is expensive. That means that when Bradley was searching people's houses and cars, that he was stealing drugs. That's what that means. There's more than one crime here. Not just the domestic, not just the meth, not just the fentanyl, right? Yeah, and where was Ironton Auditor Terry? Wasn't Ironton Auditor on the scene filming people? We need to find a new auditor in Ironton and we need to fund the new I Ironton Auditor and we gotta get that name taken away from Terry uh, because that's not what he is. He is not an auditor. He is not at all an auditor. He's a fraud. He was filming Bradley Spooljerick and buddy buddy with Bradley. What is meth then, TN Civil Audit? I don't, listen, I've never done meth. I've never done fentanyl. I, I think they're barbiturates. Are they called something else? I don't know, dude. I don't know. I don't know the answer. Hamzi Terry v. Ohio needs to be overturned. What? What? So, what is fentanyl? It's not a. It's not a bar barbiturate. I thought it was. I thought it was. I mean, you know. But this is just a quick shout out to all my friends in Ironton. Did I do this, guys? Did I come to your town and the people who hate me? Did I cause all these problems? Did I cause all these problems? Or are these problems a reality of America because we have given police, which we don't have police, we have only have peace officers in America, but this term police, cop, law enforcer, all these bullshit terms were given to these absolute tyrants. And then what happens? We give them absolute autonomy. And then what happens? They're stealing drugs. Who thinks, let me ask you this question. Press number one, if you think Bradley Spooljerick or even McKnight stole those drugs, push two if you think they bought them. Who thinks, number one, that they stole them, or number two, that those cops bought the drugs? Who thinks, number one, that they were stolen, number two, that they bought the drugs? Or number three, whatever. <laughs> Do you think that Bradley Spooljerick or McKnight, where the drugs were found in his house, do you think that they paid for those drugs? This is a fair question to ask. Did Bradley Spooljerick take money out of his wallet and pay a drug dealer for the 20 grams of meth and eight grams of fentanyl? Or did he steal it? Did he steal it? <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. So just let, let's play out the crime. Let's play the entire crime out. So number one, Brad, Bradley Spooljerick's wife knows he's a drug dealer. How long has Bradley Spooljerick been a drug dealer? Has McKnight allegedly been involved with dealing drugs? How long? Because if the wife called the cops and said, I got the evidence, and she gives the evidence to the cops, how long has Bradley been a drug dealer? Second question, how long did McKnight know that Bradley was dealing drugs? How long? Oh, I'm sure he pled the fifth. Everybody here should plead the fifth. How long did McKnight or 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 Fauci or or uh, uh, <laughs> I forget all the pigs' names? Goo. How long? Chad Goo. Chad, did you know that McKnight and Spooljerick 
were drug dealers? Did, did Goo know? Goo, did you know? Chad Goo. Ch Chad Goo's making videos all the time with this newfound celebrity. I'm so happy for you, Chad. I really am, dude. I'm glad you got almost a thousand people following you, Chad. I'm so happy about that. But let me ask you a question. What in the world? Let me ask you a question. How long have you known Chad Goo? Chad Goo, how long have you known that those two guys have been involved in the drug business? That's a fair question to ask. He is the captain. I'm the captain now. He's the captain. They all know. That's right. That's the right answer, Ryan and Michelle. That's the, read the Mullen Commission. It's available on my website for free. It costs you no money. You go to delete laws, you go to the download page, and you download the Mullen Commission. It's free. How many people are gonna download the Mullen Commission today? How many people are gonna download it? It costs you nothing. And then read Narcotics uh, Police as Drug Dealers. That's a title of a chapter in the Mullen Commission. Cops as Drug Dealers. That's the title of the entire chapter. Did I make that up in 1992? Did I do that? I was in high school, so I don't know what you're talking about. It wasn't me that wrote the Mullen Commission that's gonna come out in 1994. It starts in 92, and one of the titles of a, a chapter in the Mullen Commission is Cops as Drug Dealers. Did you know that? How many people knew that? How many people knew that there's a chapter in the Mullen Commission called Cops as Drug Dealers, and then Cops Protecting Drug Dealers, and then Cops as Enforcers for Drug Dealers? How many people knew that? How many people knew those, those three chapters exist? Did you, did you hear about that? What about the anti-corruption units failing? What about internal affairs working with drug dealers? Who knew about that? Who knew, who's read that before? I mean, Dina, you keep getting timed out. Have you read the Mullen Commission? Oh, I know, daddy was a pig, grandpa was a pig. So you just got your little nose all the way up the pig's behind. And when I'm talking about pigs, remember, we're talking about the bad ones. So the bad ones are pigs, right? The bad ones are pigs. But let me ask Chad Goo, Someone go to Chad Goo's videos and ask him. Someone go to Chad Goo's videos and ask Chad Goo, how long did you know Spooljeric and McKnight were working together? How long did you know Spooljeric was beating his wife? How long did you know? It's a fair question. It's a fair question. I mean, Chad Goo, how long do you know? Someone asked Chad Goo on all of his newfound fame and videos, how long did he even have the inclination? Because let me just tell you guys something. Let me tell you something. So I've been an executive in companies since I was about 30 and now I'm 47. So I've been an executive for 17 years off and on, depending on which company I work for. In other words, I'm in charge of hiring or firing. I'm in charge of writing the contracts. I'm in charge of writing the sales scripts. That's what I do when I enter a company as an executive. I start to do action plans that are gonna make it so this company runs better. I'll fire the bad staff, which I did in the last company I came into. I fired everybody and I rehired all new people, my people who I brought in. So. When you go in as an executive and you start cleaning house and you say, you guys are fired, you people are hired, I'm gonna change that script, I'm gonna change that commission structure, I'm gonna change this so this company become lucrative. When I do that, when I walk into a company like that, then what I do is, I, the first week or two, I'm spending a lot of time going like this. What's he doing? What's he doing over there? I got a call about this. What, what are you doing over there exactly? Who's that? Why is she doing that? That's not the right thing to do. That's not the company uh, logo anymore. That's not our company mantra. That's not what we say in this company. I change everything when I go in. Okay, so now, when you do that, when you go into a company and you start to clean house and fire people and set new sales and new commissions and all these things, then what you do when you go into that company is there's people who do things and you go like this. You see them do something and you go, What'd you just do? What's he doing? You literally, because you have to learn everything about the company, you look and you go, what? That's not right. I, that's not right. What that person is doing is wrong. So Chad Goo and Pam Wagner and the rest of the police officers in Ironton, they all looked at Bradley Spooljeric 
when he disappeared down the alleyway, when he went into that crack house, when he went to that whore house, when he went to that strip club, when he went to the places he went, the people in charge, the people who are supposed to be his superiors, they looked over and they went, what's he doing? And they knew, they knew. How many people have been cheated on by a girlfriend or by a boyfriend? How many people have been cheated on by a husband or a wife? How many people? How many people? Put one if you've been cheated on. Put a one. I've been cheated on. I could put a one myself. I've been cheated on by my girlfriend. It's happened to me in my lifetime. It's happened to me. Has it happened to you? Put a one if you've been cheated on by your boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife. Just put a one if you've been cheated on. I've been cheated on, so my one goes in the comment section. Now let me ask you a question. As you realize you're being cheated on, somewhere along the way, you went like this. What are they doing? What are they doing? You said you were going to your brother's and then your brother called me and asked where you were so you weren't at your brother's. Does that not happen? For all the people who've been cheated on, wasn't there a moment where you went, what's he doing? What's she doing? What are they doing? I mean, isn't there that moment isn't there that moment? I had it. I had it. I had it with my ex-girlfriend who cheated on me. There was a moment where I was like, this doesn't compute. And I remember, and by the way, you know, I'm not going to get into it, but, but there was a one point when I was talking to my girlfriend who cheated on me and I was walking her down the line of the information that I've been given. And so then it came to a point where I realized she wasn't just going to admit she cheated. So I asked her, I said, so baby, listen to me. You said you were in Orange County last night and then we talked on the phone and then you said you were heading back up to LA to crash. Did you go back up to LA or did you stay in Orange County? Cause you told me you went up to LA, but just answer this question for me. Did you go back up to LA or did you stay down in Orange County? And she said, I stayed down in Orange County. And that, and, and she had lied the night before and said she was going up to LA. So that was her admitting that she had cheated because she didn't want to say it. And then I said, well, okay. Okay. Because this is over, you know? And then she started to like freak out and I said, listen, baby, we've had a great relationship. You know, you made a mistake here that I can't accept. So I'm going to be moving on, but I don't want to have a screaming match with you. I don't want to yell at you. I, I'm not even unhappy with you as, as someone I was with. I'm unhappy that you cheated on me, but there's always that moment where you take a long look at the person and you go, what are they doing? What are they doing? If you've ever been cheated in business where someone has stolen or embezzled money out of your account, that's happened to me. That's happened to me. And there is a moment where you get tipped off that someone's robbing you. There's a moment. For example, hot tow truck girl must have figured out when this animal jumped on top of me and said, you slept with him and now you're gonna sleep with me, but he used the F word. She probably thought for a moment, I'm about to get raped here. And so she flipped out, called the cops and said she doesn't remember anything. But there was a moment when she realized I'm about to get raped. And so she adjusted. And that's AFA who is ex-girlfriend filled out a police report that he attempted to rape her according to her police report. So there's a moment where you realize this is a bad person. When did Chad Goo take a look over at Bradley Spuljarek and, and, and McKnight, is his name Stephen McKnight, and go, I wonder if they're dealing drugs. I wonder why they're going into that alley so much. I wonder why they're over here on their off time. I wonder why they have so much extra money. Because by the way, just so you know, cops hang out with cops. Cops just hang out with cops for the most part. Now some cops have regular friends, but the majority of cops just hang out with cops. So when Bradley went to the casino, when Bradley went to the bar, when Bradley went uh, to the golf range, when Bradley went on holiday over to Connecticut with the guys from the squad. Didn't other people notice, man, this guy's got a lot of extra change. He's got a lot of extra change. He's got a lot of extra money. 
How come he has so much money? Why does he have so much money? These are legitimately fair questions to ask. These are legitimately fair questions to ask. And so you start to say, Chad Goo, when did you notice how much extra money Brad had or McKnight had? When did that happen? Uh, Chad Goo, Chad, 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 Mr. Goo, Mr. Goo. Because just so you know, I mean, look, I've done every kind of job you can imagine. I, I've worked in concrete. I've worked as a dancer. I've worked as a, I mean, you, I've worked as a producer. I've worked as an actor. I've worked as an, I've worked as an executive. I've worked as a laborer. I've worked as a supervisor. I've, I've done, I've done so many jobs in my life. I can't even imagine it. Right. I mean, I've done so many jobs in my lifetime because I can do anything. I can be the guy doing the hard bust ass labor, or I can be the guy supervising, or I can be the executive in the office setting the budget for the hard bust ass labor. So I've done all kinds of work. Now, let me just tell you something. The one thing that is resounding across all professions is that when you take a break from that labor or from supervising or from being an executive, and then you go and do something with the people you're associated with, you certainly notice who's got some extra change. And so the other cops, all the cops, the, the sheriffs, the, the, the Ironton PD, which is corrupt from top to bottom, they all would have noticed the Bradley or McKnight, man, they got a lot of extra, unless they're all in on it, unless they're all in on it. And then they don't notice that Bradley just picked up the entire round of drinks for 16 people. Because when you're making meth money to pick up the round of drinks for 16 people, 300, 400 bucks, I don't care. I'll just pay it. I don't care. I, I just made $1,500 today by moving this much rock. Is that is meth a rock? I'm just going by what I see on a Breaking Bad, so I don't I don't know what what actually is uh, meth. I just I, I've never done it, so um, <laughs> so his cleaning business is booming, right? His cleaning business is booming. Meth money ain't ain't fake, man. Ain't fake. Chuck Bronson in the hizzy. Everybody, Chuck Bronson is here. Chuck Bronson's one of my favorite channels. You know, Chuck, I've been checking your channel every night for the past four or five days. I, I didn't check last night, but I've been checking your channel. You're not blocked, Sekar. Yeah, um, you know, I've been checking your channel, Chuck, to see you driving around, and I just don't see you driving around. I've been looking for your channel. I go to your channel. I've been here every night to try to see you driving around, and I have not seen you driving around, Chuck. So I'm, 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 I'm waiting. Maybe I'll go tonight because I'm almost to my destination where I'm going here today. I'm about three hours away from where I'm going right now. And uh, and then I'll be able to Chuck, uh, check Chuck Bronson's channel tonight. You know, Chuck is out of gas. Well, Chuck, we're going to replenish that gas fund of yours, brother. Uh, everybody, make sure you subscribe to Chuck Bronson's channel. Um, and make sure when you go there, listen, the whole idea of being an activist, of being an auditor, is that we crowdfund guys like Chuck. So when you go by Chuck's channel, drop him five or $10. Five or $10 isn't gonna kill you, but if 400 people drop him five or $10, then Chuck Bronson can drive around all night long, just drive all night. And that ends up being a thousand bucks. Look what we did for Deborah. You guys all chipped in for Deborah, and we raised her $950 so far. There's gonna be more people who can continue to, to donate to Deborah, and we're gonna see her case all the way through till the end. It's not gonna stop. Everybody hit the like button if you would, please. Everybody take your finger right there. Just take a second. If you're watching on your phone, close the live chat, then hit the like button, then hit the live chat box again. Or if you're watching on your computer, take your finger, go right down here and just hit that like button if you would, pretty please, with cherries and sugar on top, on top. Yeah, Sinstar33, uh, I'm all about it. I'm all about it. God bless you, Chuck Bronson, for doing the work. Chuck is an actual activist. He's a real activist. He's not doing it for clicks and views and likes. He's doing it because he has to. It's in him. He has to drive around. He has to film cops. When I pass a cop on the street, I'm not thinking to myself, oh man, I'm gonna get some great comments on this one. I'm gonna make some money on my YouTube channel. No, I'm thinking I'm gonna film that cop for the person in the, in the passenger seat of that car. That's what I'm thinking. P-Rex, P-Rex in a hizzy. Uh, oh, by the way, guys, I posted everybody's uh, cash app 
Venmo, PayPal. I posted the donations up in the community tab. You guys can see it. You guys can see it. We raised 950 bucks for Deborah. Uh, Right, right around there, nine, nine, 925 to 960, somewhere in there. But she got 950 cash in her pocket. So, Dina, you don't make any sense, honey. Delete laws is because you keep getting sacked? Getting sacked? Dina, I got people who want to hire me now to run their companies. Right now, I got a guy who owns a weed distribution company. He's asking me to come and start at 150 a year plus bonuses and incentives to stay on. So right this minute, I have an offer to work as executive for a weed company for $150,000 a year plus uh, bonuses and incentives. Right this minute, I got the offer on the table. I'm not gonna take it because I've dedicated to this, but you know, it is what it is. There's some people who are just get it done guys, get it done gals. There are people who are get it done people. And then there are people who don't get it done. Don't get it done. No, I don't, uh, is Brad in the stream? Is Brad Spooljeric in here? Nope, I'm not doing a fundraiser for Spooge, but I'm more than willing to talk to Spooge. Spooge, give me a call, dude. Listen, no one ever has to know that we talk Bradley. I'll never reveal you. There are people that I can't say anything. There are people involved in government in the Ironton tri-state area who talk to me, who call me on the phone and we, I record the conversation and I have long conversations. This is just one person I'm thinking about in my head right now. Um, and so, and so, you know, Oh, Bob, you're back again. Bob, I'm going to I'm going to send you packing for the day. Um, I'll unblock you after the live, Bob, but I just don't have time for your bullshit today, man. There's other things I got to focus on besides you being a troll. Go build your own following, Bob. Go build up your own following. Go build up people who want to follow you. And then you can make all the videos you want. You can say all the hateful garbage you want to say. So, but I just don't got to put up with your shit. <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is. It is what it is. You know, and, and you know, if you get blocked for the day, guys, I'll unblock you later. But I just don't want to put up with your shit. And I, and I don't really have to because apparently, apparently, I was right. D can anybody disagree with me? Can anybody say that I was wrong? I was right that Ironton is corrupt and that the cops are running the drugs and they're getting helped by the FBI and the DEA. Was I right? One for yes, two for no. Was I correct? Was I correct? One for yes, two for no. If I was right, put a one, that Ironton is corrupt and that the cops are running the drugs and they're getting helped by the FBI and the DEA and that's what's going on. I didn't do that. I, I, I did, I, I'm not a cop or FBI or DEA in, in the tri-state area, but they're all in on it. They're all making money. Did a DEA agent murder Caleb Slay within five seconds? Yes, he did. Was the guy who he was chasing, did he go to jail? No. So Caleb Slay was murdered within five seconds so they could keep their confidential informants in check. <laughs> That's the investigation that I got to. I didn't get any further than that because after that, this crazy chick melted down started making things up about me. He said, fuck Caleb Slay. No, I didn't. Tina, you are a liar. I've never said anything like that about Caleb Slay. I actually care about that kid. Don't care about you. You're a troglodyte. You are absolute waste of space. Take the money you're making, Tina, and go chase down Caleb's murderers. Get justice for your kid. And, and I don't care. I'm tired of her. I'm a grieving mother. Shut your fake mouth. You're going on troll panels and just talking about me chase down the, the, the killers of your son. So it looks like I was right. It looks like I said that the cops are the drug dealers in Ironton. They're getting help from the feds or from the DEA and they are. And it looks like the judges and the prosecutors are all in on it and they are. And they're all making money from the rehabs. And then Sean DeLong, who, who was working with me as a confidential informant, is now facing 10 years in prison. Who's the victim of Sean DeLong? 
Where is the, the child that he predated? Where is the woman that he beat? Sean DeLong is looking at 10 years in prison. Meanwhile, Bradley Spuljarek's wife called and said, he's beating me and here's his drugs. Is he facing 10 years in prison? Because Sean DeLong is facing 10 years, 12 years in prison. Thank you, you have rights, cops have duties, I appreciate that. It just, it's just astounding to me that so many people wanna hate on me and say, oh, he's bad, he's, he beats women, he deals drugs. And then the people who you hang around with, Bradley Spuljarek and Josh from AFA, they actually have women who are claiming they beat or rape them and they actually have a drug dealing past. Well, I don't know if Josh has a drug dealing past, he just has a past of shooting up drugs. Oh, Brad, that's not really you. That's, that's, let me just, let me just send you packet. It's a fake account. Uh, someone can investigate that account, see how long it's been created. I'm going to guess it's been created today. That's what I'm going to guess. And he certainly wouldn't go by Bradley's pool Jarek to reach out to me. He would create a fake account to reach out to me, which by the way, Bradley, I will protect your identity. I will not tell anybody you talk to me. I will never reveal that you talk to me. So you know, Bradley, if you want to reach out to me, my number's on the internet. It's not hard to get. So uh, you can reach out to me anytime, Bradley. And then maybe you can reverse your bullshit affidavit. Actually, I guess so. Bradley's going to have to resign. He's going to have to resign. Can't be a pig and be a drug dealer. Sorry. Not allowed. Not allowed. So Bradley's going to have to resign. And then he's going to have to take a diversion program. And he's going to have to go into some sort of uh, anger management but he should spend some, according to the current structure, which I disagree with, he should be spending some time in prison for beating his wife and having that much methamphetamines and that much fentanyl. So the, for my detractors of the 100 or 200 who are here, is there a woman saying, look at what he did to me, look at my face? Is there a woman like that for me? Is there a 911 call? Is, is there a hospital report? Nothing. And then for the people, People who say, oh, Chili was charged with dealing drugs, but the charges were dropped. I took a diversion program for a substance I had a possession of. That's not dealing drugs. But yet Bradley's well, Jarek was caught with 28 grams. Eight of those grams kill you upon touching them. But yet I'm, I'm the drug dealer. Chili is the drug dealer. <laughs> I mean... It's just insane. Look at the cognitive dissonance you're holding in your mind to hold hatred for me. There's no woman saying, look at my face, he beat me. There's no, no conviction or even a charge. Just so you know, I was charged with being a drug distributor with no evidence. There's no evidence. <laughs> I was charged with distributing a chemical with no chemical. Where's the chemical? They charged me with being a drug distributor, but there was no chemical being distributed. Where is the evidence of a chemical in my home? Where is the chemical? There's no chemical. I never had a chemical. There was no, there wasn't 28 grams of chemical in my room. <laughs> I didn't have a chemical to be dealing drugs. <laughs> but yet the people in here can say, oh, Chili, you were a GHB dealer, but where's the G? You have to have a copious amount of it to be a drug dealer, don't you? Don't you have to have some drugs to deal? <laughs> you do have to have some drugs to be a drug dealer, right? I didn't have any. So I was charged with five felonies on bullshit, absolute and total bullshit. But now we have hard evidence from the woman abuser AFA that he went to jail, that he's a recovering drug addict admittedly, but he's, he's a good guy. And then, and then Bradley Spuljarek, who I went to his town and said, it's probably you. You're probably the bad guy here. He is. He beats his wife and they found him with 28 grams of deadly chemicals. And you're still pointing the finger at me. Where's the evidence ever brought against me? Where is the, the stack of drugs that I was drug dealing? Where is it? Can anybody tell me where it is? I was charged with five felonies. One of those was distribution of a controlled substance. Where's the evidence? 
where's the controlled substance? There would have to have been some sort of controlled substance to deal a controlled substance. I didn't have any because I was never a drug dealer. I'm going to reveal how the whole thing went down. Just wait. Just wait. I'll reveal the entire thing. There's people's names I'm not saying right now because uh, I don't want to open up a can of worms for them as people because they're old friends of mine. So, you know. Yeah, I took a deferment. I took a... I took a deferment for a possession of a chemical, not 28 grams of a chemical. You see the difference? You, you, see, you, you, see, you see the difference? Yeah, I've, I've, seen, I've, I've, I've seen just about enough of you. Yeah, I've seen about enough of you, dude. I don't think I'm gonna unblock you either. I think I'm gonna leave you blocked, brother. You're just, you're garbage. You're garbage. You, you, you don't offer anything to society. You don't offer anything to this conversation. So I'm not going to have you here anymore. I did unblock everybody the other day just because I, I, I don't want to block people. But there's people like this guy who I just permanently blocked. I'll probably never take him off the block list. He can create another account and I'll block that one because they can't help it. They can't help it. They're just so lost in hatred. It's, it is what it is. It is what it is. You can send her packing. Thank you. Appreciate that. No, I just, I wanna, I, because there's so many people, there's so many people that come to my channel and say negative things to me. And I just want them to realize that the things that you're saying negative to, to me and hatred for me um, you can just send Santoro pack and you can just permanently block uh, Santoro. I, wait, I just don't need him in here. You know, it's just the constant garbage. So um, thank you, Beth Wrist. I appreciate you coming by. Hey, Beth. Hey, Beth Wrist is there. I'm going to call Beth Wrist's phone. I'm gonna, uh, Beth, I'm going to call your phone right now. I want to ask you a question, Beth. I got a question for you. I'm calling your phone right now, Beth Wrist. I'm giving you a call. Yeah, you can block Nikki Santoro. He's just wasting time. I'm calling your phone. I want to. I want to ask. I want to ask Beth Risk a, a question here. See if I can reach her. Hello. Hey Beth, I got you on the line. There's 425 people listening to you talk. How you doing today, Beth? I'm doing okay. How are you? Good. I have a question for you. How long were you a police officer for in Ironton? Uh, 12 years, 13 years. So you were there for over 12 years. Okay. So, you know, we just found out that Spooge got caught with 28 grams, eight of those grams being fentanyl, and then uh, accused of beating his wife. So she must have been tired of the abuse. Uh, yes. Let me ask you, when a cop in a tiny town like that's dealing drugs, do the other cops know it? I'm sure they do. Right, right. So that means if he was staying in McKnight's house, and stashing the drugs over there, then there's a good chance McKnight knew about the drugs and knew about the woman abuse. Would that be correct? Correct. Right. And have you seen that before, Beth? I mean, your time in Ironton PD has passed, but have you seen that before where cops are doing corrupt things on the job? Yes. So what do other cops do when they see other cops dealing drugs or beating women? What's the... They back them down, they back up, they, they don't say anything. Really? The brotherhood. Oh, so so if no, no, I'm I'm just gonna go out on a limb here, and I'm gonna say that more than a couple cops knew that Spooge was dealing drugs, uh, at least right. at least one or two. Would that be correct? Yes. Okay. So cops know when other cops are on the take and doing shady stuff. Yes. Okay. So then Spooge, who had been staying with McKnight, according to Tim, um. So then there's a good chance McKnight knew that Spooge was dealing drugs. Yes, possibly. Possibly. And then, you know, how many people, how many cops are on that force? You got like eight or nine cops over there? Is it 10 cops maybe? I'm not, I'm not sure since I've been on city council. I think there was 12 when I was on city council. Mm -hmm. And so when, Back one, in November. when one cop does something wrong, do all the other cops know about it? Do they all talk about it internally? Um, Oh, yes. Oh, yes. 
So if, if, if one cop, if any, let's say that Fauci knew that Spooge was dealing drugs, would he then like in the locker room or in the, around the water cooler or even out on a patrol, would they kill the microphones and say, hey Beth, you know, I, I think Brad's dealing drugs? Yes, I'm sure. So they do have those internal conversations? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They did about me anyway, so I know they do. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, I mean, I just, I find it hard to, and then what about the spousal abuse with police officers? Do, do other cops know when one cop is beating his wife? I'm not sure they broke about that, but um, I'm, I'm proud of uh, his wife for calling and stepping up. Yeah, me too. You know, and then, you know, if, if you can get a hold of his wife, I'd like to talk to her. And I'd like to talk to Bradley as well, confidentially, and see if he's well ready to turn the page now and enter the world of justice and enter the world of righteousness. Because you can't sign up to a, be a cop today and enter a Death Star and think you're doing enough. It's just damn near impossible. So then they knew, th 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 then I just wanna know from you unequivocally, they knew, at least one other cop knew that Bradley had 28 grams of chemicals. I'm sure. Right. And that's pretty normal. Yes, probably where he confiscated on the other people. Oh, so, so then there was more than one crime here. It wasn't just that he was dealing drugs. There's a chance then, so no, no but take it, take it away for me here. So when a cop has 28 grams of meth, eight grams of fentanyl, 20 grams of meth, did, does he buy those drugs? So then, no, I, I, it's a hypothetical, it's a loaded question because there's no way in hell Bradley Spooljerick paid a drug dealer for drugs. Is that a correct statement? Yes, I would say so. Bradley doesn't have to pony up 5,000 bucks to buy his drugs, does he? I wouldn't know. Right, so he stole them is what you're saying. Or that there's a good chance he took them, stole them, didn't put the drugs in the evidence locker, he, he didn't purchase them, so he did, in fact, commandeer, uh, 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 what's the proper word? Steal. He stole those drugs. Wow, well, I don't know. Sure you do. It, how many other cops on the force ever bought drugs or did they steal them? Um, probably at least four. Oh, you know of at least four. So she knows of at least four in the dozen cops in Ironton in her time that were stealing and dealing drugs. Now, do cops, when they're dealing drugs, do they work solo on that or do other cops help them? I have no idea. They, they left me out of the loop because I, they didn't want a female there. So they left me out of the loop. They talked amongst themselves, but I heard, I heard several conversations. And then, you know, last month, Bradley Spooljerick put on his Facebook page that they had seized some drugs there in Ironton. Do you remember reading that post? Yes. Mm -hmm. So then the chance that he got the drugs from that bust is between pretty good and solid. Is that right? Solid. 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 And then if another cop would have found out, let's just say that McKnight... <laughs> Let's just say McKnight, a little wussy boy that he is. Say wussy boy wasn't a part of it and he found out that Bradley was dealing drugs. Would McKnight turn him in? No, he wouldn't. He would defend him. He would, they wouldn't tell on each other. They would not tell on each other. So if Chad Goo knew that Spool Jarek was dealing drugs, Chad Goo wouldn't turn him in. Wow. So I thought they were law enforcers though. They enforce the laws on our country. I thought that was the whole idea that we enforce laws. That way if there's no victim, we can still enforce a law on you and make you the victim. But you're saying that if any cops in Ireland, what about Pam Wagner? If she found out that he had 28 grams of, of, of drugs in his car, would she arrest him? Um, I don't know what she would do, but uh, as chief of police, she should know what each of our officers are doing. Right. So, so Beth then, 
th- th- so then there's a chance that Pam Wagner, I mean, look, I've been the supervisor for people. As you, as you look out over your team of, of employees, you say, man, I'll bet you this one's doing something wrong. Do you think Pam ever looked over the horizon, saw Bradley Spooljarek and said, I'll bet he's doing shit bad? Wow, I don't know. Well, I, I asked you to speculate pretty heavy there. And uh, Beth is a former police officer. She's not going to speculate on hearsay. She's just telling me the typical uh, rigor mortis of what policing in America offers. You know, and so... Oh, you just you just end up with this corrupted system. So, but but from your experience as a cop, it's a blue wall of silence. They're not going to tell us, are they? Right. 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 And then, oh, by the way, guys, um, Beth Rist, um, she uh, she has her tapes transcribed now. She wore a wire for multiple hours and we transcribed those tapes and those digital tapes are going to go online very soon just giving beth a chance to look through all the tapes and listen to them so she can have the content for her upcoming book and so what about the mayor and the city council does the mayor and the city council do they know what's going on um well i i haven't heard uh, anybody be able to get to talk to the mayor <laughs> and he's been unseen and unheard of no, I don't. I don't know. Right, but just so you know, Beth, the mayor has been unseen and unheard from since I was in Ironton in March. We can't. We can't. I mean, I don't know why the people of Ironton would elect such a lip dick wussy like that mayor. I mean, what a fraud that guy is. I mean, uh, it's just disgusting. So now, 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 should heads roll here, Beth? Should heads roll because? If the chief of police doesn't know that her sergeant and one of her officers is living together and have 28 grams of chemicals that when combined create hot shots and kill people, then should heads roll, should the chief of police, should her, should her head roll as far as her job? Um, I'm sure. I mean, she knew her sister dealt drugs, so uh, she didn't do anything about that. So um, she meant to You just so, but typically though, in a small police department like this, when 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 one of the ten cops on the police force gets caught dealing drugs, I mean, shouldn't the highest ranking, um, and I hate that I, we shouldn't have rankings in in peace officers, but shouldn't the highest ranking peace officer be cut loose? I would imagine yes. So this means Pam Wagner should resign. Pam Wagner should resign. We should go by the Ironton Police Department Facebook page and tell Pam Wagner it's time for her to resign. Well, I agree. Pam Wagner needs to resign. Everybody go by the iron because, you know, you can't call flood people because that's against the rules of YouTube, but you're more than welcome to go to Ironton Police Department Facebook page. It's time for Pam Wagner to resign. So 16 ounces it, uh, uh, 28 grams. Beth, now I'm not familiar with the methamphetamine world. I'm sorry, I just didn't spend any time doing meth. But how much is 20 grams of methamphetamines? Oh, I'm not sure. I mean, 20 grams though, Beth. How much does it take? Say I was going to do meth. How much, how much would I need to buy? Could I get high on one gram? I'm sure, but I'm, I don't. How much is one gram of meth and how and, and how long can I get high with my friends with one gram of meth? Can anybody answer that for me? I can find out. Because I know a I can find out. Because I know a gram of cocaine, you can get high with your friends with a gram of cocaine and people can do Hollywood. One gram will last a group of people, you know, half the night. Well, you go to parties in LA, people are doing cocaine. It's pretty normal. And a gram of cocaine will get a but, you know, a whole handful of people high on cocaine. So how much was one gram of methamphetamines? It's got to be stronger. So a tenth of a gram to get high is what 
Someone just chimed in here. Is it a tenth of a gram for one person? How, how, how far does one gram of methamphetamines go? I just don't know. I don't either. A gram will last about two days if you straight smoke it. I don't know. You don't know. One, what? one gram will last people for one week. I was just texting. One gram. One gram will last a group of people one week. Is that what you said? Point one. Point one. Point one grams will last a group. Wait, I'm sorry. You have to repeat that for me because I didn't have the volume turned up. One tenth of one gram. Oh, so so Robert just said a half a gram will keep two people awake for a week. So, wow. so, wow, wow. So, <laughs> so. Spooge had quite a bit of meth. And I'm sure he had quite a bit of cash that they didn't reckon, they didn't know the deal. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Beth the cop, Beth the former police officer, comes in with some facts that none of us thought about just now, that nobody just thought about, and she's bringing it up. And so I want to ask the Ironton Police Department, you mean you arrested him and you didn't find a stack of cash? Is that, Beth, if he had 20 grams of meth and eight grams of fentanyl, then he had five, 10, 25 grand with him? I'm sure. Wow, wow. So where'd the money go, Lebowski? Where'd the money go? Hey, Spooge, where, Pam Wagner, Captain Chad Goo, where'd the money go, Lebowski? Where'd the money go? What what happens now, Beth? When money like that, so so the 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 good cops went over to arrest the bad pigs because none of the other ones knew about it. Only the bad pigs were doing bad, and the good cops nobody knew about that. They didn't know that he was dealing drugs. So the good cops go over there to arrest the bad cop who beats his wife and deals drugs. And then when they get there, the good cops confiscate the drugs, they put uh, spooge in handcuffs, and then what do the good cops do with that money? Well, it's supposed to go to the evidence room. So what did the good cops do with the money? <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I keep on trying, I keep on going back and forth in my heart. I want to respect police officers and I want to treat them with respect and dignity and call them police officers and rights protectors. But now we're taking a look and we're seeing that those good cops who arrested the woman abuser and the drug dealer, those good cops sounds like they pocketed thousands and thousands of dollars. Is that normal? Yes. Yes, that's normal. Wow. 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 Just crazy. Just absolutely crazy. So the good cops are, are, are taking up the money, are taking the money from what the bad cops do. And then what do the good cops do? Do they claim that on their taxes? Well, who's to say that the cops that arrested him aren't bad also? Well, we're supposed to believe though, Beth, that it's just a few bad apples, just a couple bad apples. Well, there's a lot of apples on the apple tree. <laughs> a lot of apples. Lebowski is, uh, 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 it's a Lebowski, it's a, the big Lebowski. That's where the line comes from. L-A-B-O-S-K-I, Lebowski. I'm spelling it wrong, but someone can spell Lebowski. That's the incorrect spelling so far, but Lebowski, uh, the big Lebowski. Where's the money, Lebowski? Where's the money, Lebowski? <laughs> so then, no, no, let me ask you a question, Beth. When you went on vacation with other cops, when you guys went off down to the river or you went to the casino, did you notice when one cop had a lot of extra cash? I didn't hang out with any of them. I was the outsider. So uh, I didn't go to the bars with them and hang out. Pam mm -hmm. did, but I did. Pam did? Yes. So then Pam, if she hang, if she hangs out with with Bradley Spooljarek, she would notice, man, this guy's got some extra spending cash. I would assume. Right. Right. So we're, we're just living in this dystopian society where last month 
they claim they got a bunch of drugs off a drug dealer. Did anybody film that, Beth? Are you aware of that? They claim that they caught a bunch of drugs and they confiscated that. But did anybody film the confiscation? Um, no, they don't film it. Is that what you asked me? Yes, that's what I'm asking you. No, they, they don't film it. So... Like on TV, they don't film crime scene. They don't film... Uh, not, not to my knowledge, they don't do any of that. So, as they're confiscating these drugs and saying, we got uh, 100 grams of meth and then they turn in 80 and Bradley puts 20 grams in his pocket and we got, you know, 50 grams of fentanyl and then Bradley puts eight grams of that fentanyl in his pocket and then we seized $100,000 in cash as they put $50,000 into their pocket. Is, does this sound something that's normal? Is it, am I saying the right things here or am I way off track? No, you're, you're, uh, you're, you're saying the right things. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So as long as we don't have a third party that films what, what peace officers do, it's going to continue. It'll never get better. Though, because when you're faced with $50,000 and you can get 28 grams of chemicals that are going to make you a lot of money, it's just too much of a temptation. Is, would that be, you think that's true? Yes, I'd say. Right. And as long as there's not someone objectively standing there and filming them, men are corrupt. Women are corrupt. People are corrupt. They're corrupt. That's just the way it is. Yes. So what would you recommend now to, to Bradley Spool Jarek? Because he's definitely going to see this. You know, uh, I really like Brad as a person. I'm really sorry he joined the Death Star. But I like him. I think he's a really likable, gregarious kind of personality when he's not abusing, beating, and cheating people, uh, including his wife. But, you know, as far as a person, I, I didn't dislike him as a person. What would you recommend to him right now? Would you recommend, I mean, what, I mean, what would your recommendation be for an officer who's been uh, caught uh, uh, being a criminal? I would, I would uh, recommend exposing, unraveling everybody else. Right. Right. Because they're all involved at some level. Well, it looks that way, doesn't it? Yes, of course it does. Because if he's staying over at McKnight's house, then, <laughs> come on. It's it, it's just disgusting. It's just disgusting. It's it's just disgusting. But I called this, Beth. You remember I came into town and I said that, uh, that the cops are doing the work here. The cops are doing the drug dealing. I called this on a video. You can go to my older videos where I said the cops are the drug dealers. The cops are the ones bringing the dr drugs in the jail. I, I mean, I'm sure... You Someone can go back and find my videos where I said this. It looks like that's true. Yeah. It looks like that's true. Wow. Wow. So uh, Bradley, you know, Beth Rist is on the line and she said you should you should turn and expose everybody else and end this corrupted system. This is a corrupted, broken system. As long as we don't have a third party to film and observe and then that that third party data goes back to a third party we're screwed how could you possibly listen to me beth i'm broke okay beth i'm broke okay i'm not rich <laughs> so for all the women out there who thought i was going to marry them and we were going to have a billionaire life no i'm broke i'm a broke person i was raised poor uh, middle class at some point in my life but pretty poor i was raised pretty poor and if you put me in a situation where there's a quarter million dollars and I'm looking at it, and all I can do is I could just take 50 grand of this, and by the way, this is just drug money, so no one's gonna really miss this, but it's gonna benefit my life and my cause dramatically. You know, Beth, I like to think that I'm a based, ethical person. I don't know, though. If I was put in that situation, and the people who are watching me do it are like, go ahead and take it, go ahead throw me 50 grand as well. We'll turn in a hundred instead of 250. I don't know, man. Corruption is a hard thing. I like to think that I'm based and ethical and I would do the right thing, but am I doing the wrong thing by taking drug money? You know, you start to rationalize that, don't you? You start to go, right. No one's going to miss this money. I'm not taking someone's college fund here. Right. Right. And these are just drug dealers, $20 grab bags, $100 grab bags. So I'm just taking drug money, right? I'm not really hurting anybody. Right. That's fair, isn't it? That's fair. And and Beth, I mean, I've sat here in front of thousands and 
thousands of people for a year now and said how based I am and how ethical I am and you can send me your money and I'll get through to Deborah. But I'm, but we're not talking, I'm taking people earn money that they give to Deborah and I'm sending it through. I'm not taking people's drug money and I could just grift a little here, grift a little there, right? You see the difference? Yes. People are sending their hard earned money to Deborah. So if I took a percentage of that, I would feel really bad. Like I, I'm taking someone's donation money that they gave to another person. Whereas I'll be honest with you, Beth, it would be really, really hard if they were giving me drug money and I didn't just take 20% for myself. I'm not hurting anybody. No one's gonna miss this money. That's fair, isn't it? That's the thinking, yes. And so you can't really fault these cops. There's no one standing over them, filming them. And so they're not really hurting anybody by taking 50 grand. I mean, they're not. I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying, if you steal $50,000 of meth money, you're not really taken from anybody's, you know, uh, mortgage, right? Still stealing. You, well, you, well, but what are you stealing exactly? Look, I'm not rationalizing theft here. I'm rationalizing the position that we put police officers in and then expect them to all of a sudden break their own nature and go, wow, if I took this 50 grand, it could put two of my college, two of my kids through college. You see what I'm saying? Of course it is. There was a priest one time. I'm not sure if I, I've never told this story on this channel. There was a priest one time and they, someone dropped off over a million dollars of drug money on his front porch of his church. It's a true story. And he, they, they wrote a note and said, father, this is drug money. This money doesn't belong to anybody. Please take this money and shepherd your flock. And the priest took the money, took it back to his uh, little space back there where the priest stay. And then the priest sat on the money for a week. He then called the FBI and said, I have over a million dollars of drug money. The FBI came there and they said to him, why are you, why are you giving this to us? Why didn't you take it and spend it on your, on your flock? of people you provide for the homeless, you provide for domestic uh, abuse survivors, you help people so much, why didn't you take this money? And the priest said to him, it took everything in me not to quit being a priest, take this money and fly off to an island. That's what the priest, that's what he said. Wow. <laughs> that's what he said. And so, so that's the nature of man. That's our nature. I don't care how much Jesus loving or Mohammed loving you do. When someone puts that hard cash in front of you and says, hey, no one's going to miss this money. Human nature says, well, shit, you know, my daughter is going to get through college without having to work a side job. And, you know, my son is going to be able to start his company now. I could put 30 grand into starting up his car detailing company. That's human nature, isn't it? Yes, it is. So when we give police absolute autonomy and we don't film the search and we don't film the seizure and especially we stop filming after they murder someone, we're never gonna get truth and justice. It'll never happen because the nature of man, and this goes back again to Thomas Hobbes. So nature of man. So let me ask you a question, Beth. Is it possible to be an ethical person when you're given a large allotment of money that nobody's gonna miss. Is it logical? Is it, it's possible, sure. Is it likely? Yes, likely. It's gonna say, you know, this is gonna do society so much better if I just take it and help. Whereas if I just turn this into the evidence locker and we burn it, no, I don't think a good cop would do that. You don't think a good cop would take the money? Not a good ethical cop, no. But, but we're not talking about being unethical. He's taking money that doesn't belong to anybody. Right. So that's not really unethical. Well, I wouldn't take, I wouldn't take money from a crime scene or money from a drug dealer or anything like that. Well, but Beth, you know, the difference in your life 
if you just take this money is your family, the, the generational wealth you can achieve by putting your kid through PhD, by getting a, by getting a doctorate, by, by being able to go to the best college. You could take your children's lives and make them dramatically better. And no one's going to make it right. It, it doesn't make it wrong. It doesn't make it wrong. I'm only sticking up for the cop here. I'm sticking up for the bad cop. Listen, and it's... Steal theft. What's that? It's still theft. But who are you stealing from, though? Who, who's the victim of your theft? The victim. Who's the victim of your theft? If you take drug money from a drug dealer, who's the victim of the theft? The drug dealer. But you're actually saving him because if you turn in 200 grand versus turning in 50 grand, he's gonna have less charges. He'll have less of a charge against him. So you're helping him. Right. I'm just trying to walk through it for the people to show them that this system is broken, this system is corrupt, this system will never work. It'll never, ever work. You cannot give someone 200 grand and say don't take any. It's not. It is not possible. You can't do that to a person. It just incenses me. You put these men and women in a position where to no fault of their own, to no fault of Bradley Spooljerics of his own, he's in a position where if he takes this money, it only helps him and his family and doesn't hurt anybody. It's abuse of authority, Beth, but what I'm trying to say is this system will not work. It won't work. You can't let someone search someone's vehicle without being filmed. You can't let them search for evidence and confiscate it without it being filmed. You can't do that to another person. You can't put Bradley Spuljeric in that position at 29 years old, comes from nothing, and then he's put in a position where this 28 grams of chemical is going to change the life of his family. You can't do that to Bradley. And I don't got anything against him personally. You put him, you put him in that position, you're going to ruin the man. The priest, the priest wanted to take the money and go to an island and bang little tiki girls. I'm just telling you. He had those thoughts in his mind and he'd been a priest for 30 years. But when the opportunity comes up to you and you can retire and go to an island and enjoy the rest of your life with your wife and your kids don't have to want and you don't need to apply for that second mortgage because you got it. And who did you hurt to get it? Nobody, not a single person. So all the trolls out there, I'm sticking up for the dirty pigs. The guys who are dirty pigs, they don't mean to be dirty. You put them in a corrupted system where even the best of us would take a percentage of the money. Yes, I understand that. And I don't consider Bradley a bad person. He was put into a system where he's going to cheat. He's going to cheat. And I don't mean to get excited and yell, but for the love of God, how long are we gonna perpetuate this broken up system and then punish guys like Bradley who was put in a situation where he can benefit, his family can benefit, and there's no victim to the crime. It just seems like it's corrupt to me to the core. And as long as we don't have cameras on everything, it'll continue to be corrupted. As long as we continue this bullshit war on drugs, we will continue to see people rot away in dungeons as they can't look at the people. They have to look at the floor. They're treated inhumanely. They're gang raped. It's horrible. It's horrible. And for the love of God, everybody do me a favor right now. Put your hands together and throw up a prayer for Bradley Spuljeric's wife that she's okay. Everybody pray for Bradley Spuljeric's wife that she is okay and that she can recover from this. And then do me a favor, say a prayer for Bradley Spuljeric. Bradley Spuljeric was put in a situation where he's going to be corrupted because it's the nature of man. This is why I talk about Thomas Hobbes so much. The nature of man is that we are selfish, greedy, self-entitled Neanderthals. And so for that reason, you put Bradley Spuljeric in a situation where he's going to fall back to his nature. 
that doesn't make him an evil person. Beating your wife, yeah, when you join a Death Star and you go around beating and kicking and hitting people all the time, when you get home and you can't get it up, beat that bitch. And and, and that's just yeah. that's just the way it is. Yeah. I'm not cop sucking over here. Don't think that I'm am loving the cops. I don't like I don't like cops. I love the person. I love the individual. You put right. you put Bradley in a situation where he's gonna cheat. Listen, yeah. listen, Beth, listen. <laughs> listen. Let me make it easy. Let me make it easy for those men and women who are watching this. Okay. You're married. You got the best husband or wife ever. And you know what? Your company sends you off to a company retreat. And you're off on a company retreat and it's out in these islands. And then you get dumped off in this little cottage there and the, the person next door, male or female, they're there and then boom, all the power falls out. And then the next, the, 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 the person next door, the man or woman, extraordinarily attractive. They live in England. You're never gonna see them again. Your wife or husband will never meet them. And they come over and they say, hey, listen, power's out, nobody's around. You wanna play? You, you take the most faithful man or woman, and just so you know, you know, I know this. I worked in an environment uh, when I was in my 20s that I learned the nature of sexuality in a very direct way. And if you take the, the most ethical, bound, loyal person and put them in a situation with a couple drinks and no one's going to find out, I used to say, you can take the best woman in the world, put her in the wrong situation with temptation and alcohol, she'll cheat. She'll cheat. Yes. And the same thing for a man. You put them in the wrong situation with the right amount of alcohol, no one's going to find out, he'll cheat. And there is a victim. The spouse or the girlfriend or the boyfriend, there is a victim to you cheating. But now but now you put Bradley Spooljerick in a situation, there's no victim. He's not cheating anybody out of any money. He's not cheating anybody. He took the drug so he could make more money for his family. And how can you fault the guy? How can you fault him? He was put in a situation where his nature would shine through and it did. Listen, get out and say, I'm gonna do what I want. No, 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 this, this camera is always rolling. So I, we raised $150 for, for Deborah yesterday, right? But those nations can be tracked. Everything that I did with Deborah can be tracked. My cash app can be tracked. My Venmo, my PayPal, my Zelle, everything that I've done with Deborah can be tracked. I can be held accountable, right? Right. Now just imagine all those people who gave me donations, there was no trail. There was no trail. I could just pocket a hundred for myself. I'll just put a hundred in my pocket. And no one's gonna know. There's no tracking. There's no receipt on PayPal, Venmo, Cash App, Zelle. And Deborah's not gonna know. I can just I can just take the 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 some of that 950 bucks. I can just take some of that 950 and no one's gonna know. But the difference is is that number one, there's victims of my crime, and number two, there's a paper trail. There's an electronic trail. So I'm, and then there's the camera. So there's three things going on where I have to maintain accountability. Now, when you put a cop on a scene and he's doing a drug bust and no one gets to watch what he's doing, and then anything he takes doesn't cause a victim of anybody, it only helps his family and friends, where's the crime? I understand what you're saying. I'm not saying it's right, Beth. I'm not saying it's right. I'm not up here endorsing stealing and, and taking drug dealers money and, and taking drugs from drug dealers or stealing from people who are addicts. I'm not endorsing that. What I'm saying is that there's no victim to the crime other than the drug dealer who you're taking his business and uh, voir dire-ing it for yourself. You not uh, you are appropriating it, not voir dire-ing. Voir dire someone and you ask them a bunch of questions. But you are you are appropriating that business for yourself. And that's what, yeah. we're, that's what we're looking at today. We're looking at Bradley Spooljerick who appropriated someone else's business and the person who he appropriated the business, there was less drugs being turned in, so he received possibly less charges. We gotta think about it in the other way. So maybe Bradley was helping the guy out a little bit. All right, but in this case, his wife was the victim of domestic violence, so. Yes, um, yes. I stand with her. A hundred percent. And and the and remember, the first person we prayed for was Bradley's wife. So, uh, you know, dear right. God, dear God in heaven, help her through this tough time. 
dear God in heaven, please pray for Bradley Spoljerick's wife. I'm not sure her name is, or I would say it out loud. I hope that she's able to get through this tough time because now her entire family unit's going to be upended. Did he have any children? I'm not sure. Did Bradley Spoljerick have any kids? Can, can anybody let me know? Let's pray for the kids and let's pray for the wife and let's pray for Bradley because he was put in a situation that he could not have beaten. The nature of man will not allow you to beat that. There's no victims, and if you take the money, it only improves everything for you and your family. That is, oh, so Jonathan Mitchell Music said he does have kids. Let's pray for the children, because really, you know, dear God in heaven, let's pray for those children that they go through this transitional time and that they're able to stay mentally and physically safe, because it's 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 tough, it's tough, it's tough. You know, and sadly, we you know we have to have mercy on others. We have to have mercy on Bradley. He was put in a situation where he could not have been ethical. It's not possible. Yes, yes. And then the uh, people around him are going to endorse his thievery. They're going to endorse his corruption. Would that be correct, Beth? Yes. So the police on the police squads all across America, they're like, just take it, just take it, just take the money. It's, it's put your kid through college. It's going to help you. Right? So. Right. right. I'm sure they don't tell one another. No, no, no. I mean, look, McKnight knew what was going on. If Bradley was staying at his house, he knew he was going on. You know, apparently they were going to bust McKnight. And according to uh, one of the sources there that they were going to bust McKnight. And then instead, they, uh, they uh, Bradley took the fall for McKnight because it was his home that he was staying in, I guess. I don't know. I don't know all the... The tr- I don't know the truth here. There's his side, her side, and the truth. You know. Right. And by the way, you know, uh, YT Pat, YT Pay, just uh, YT Pays, just uh, just put something up in here. Just said, you know, how do we know if Bradley Spuljerick wasn't on methamphetamines? Exactly. He could have been addicted to drugs and and then feeding the habit. Is that a possibility? Yes. They don't do random drug tests. They used to, but they don't anymore. So Ironton Police Department doesn't do random d- d- doesn't do random drug tests. Not to my knowledge. Okay. And being on city council, I would have known that because we would have got a report from the chief. You would have got a report that they were doing random drug testing. Okay. Yes. Okay. So there's no random drug testing. There's no one filming Bradley do the confiscation or the arrest. There's no third party for oversight, and so. You know, you create a perfect situation to corrupt a man. And Lord knows, I don't like cops. I'm not sticking up for that cop, right? I know you're not. I'm not saying I'm not giving excuses. I'm saying we've created a system where you're going to fall back to the nature of man, and the nature of man is a selfish, brutish Frankenstein. That's the nature of man, and then we put the nature of man in a position where he's going to fail. He's going to fail. Exactly. <laughs> and the other cops are like, yeah, do it. And make sure you get 50 grand for me too. Yeah. I mean, how much kickback money did you get, Beth? How, how many times did you get kickback money? I never got any kickback money because I didn't take any money. So on the other on the other drug bus, when you were a cop there in Ironton, how many, how many times do you think that they confiscated money and everybody on the scene got a kickback? Um. Uh, Spooge's brother, Jonathan, resigned from the uh, Lawrence County Sheriff's Department a few months ago when we exposed him. Uh, He was exposed for apparently uh, 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 statutory rape of a high school girl. And uh, then he was also uh, uh, federally charged with a civil rights violation by Kent Freeman. And we sued him in federal district court. So, so, okay. Okay, Beth, anything else you want to add? Yes, sir. Appreciate it. Thanks for the phone call, Beth. God bless you. Uh, we're still staying strong with you. you. You keep going, Tilly. Can't wait for your book to come out. And uh, I'm waiting on here back from P. And we'll talk real soon. Okay, Beth? Okay. 
Okay, thank you. Okay, bye, hon. I mean, so there you have it, guys. You know, you, you, you talk about, you talk about, you know, corruption. And as I talk this out out loud, you know, I didn't plan on sticking up for Bradley's Bull Jarek. I didn't start this live to be like, oh, I'm going to stick up for Brad, right? Uh, I'm fighting Chad Goo September 24th. I got the fight contract. I'm just milling it over. I'll sign it. I got to do a couple poses for the poster coming up. But, um, you know, um, I wasn't planning on coming on this live and sticking up for Bradley Spuljarek. However, when you read Thomas Hobbes and you understand what the nature of man is, and then you create a system where you put him with ultimate temptation and no victim of the crime, no victim, he's going to fail. He's going to fail. Special Ed, good to see you. Special Ed, nice to see you. How you doing? Uh, Tabitha, thanks for coming, guys. Any more of my members in here? Greg B, Rainbow Rose, good to see you. Cop suckers in here. Michelle, Special Ed Andrew. Oh, I can believe it. Gloria, how you doing? Scrubzilla, good to see you. Smooth sounds, man. Smooth sounds. Uh, I, I think our time, your time on my page has passed, bro. Create another account. You can come troll with that account, but this one's done. So um, who else we got in here? Rumble, good to see you. Debo Cruz is in the hizzy. Debo Cruz is in the hizzy. Yeah, you know, I, I'm not sticking up for Bradley Spuljarek. Good old boy. Good old boy. So fake is here, good old boy. I'm not sure what that means exactly. But uh, I will tell you this, that Bradley Spuljarek was put into a system that he could not have possibly won. Hit the nature of mankind will force him to do things wrong. Now beating your wife is one thing. Jeff hates pigs! Jeff hates pigs! Jeff hates pigs! You know, the nature of man will lead you to where you're, uh, you're going to do the wrong thing. And we don't know if Bradley Spuljarek was on drugs or not. A good old boy, I didn't call you a fake. So just... You know, good old boy, uh, you, you walk the line of, of cop sucking and then at the same time wanting accountability. So I don't know who you really are, dude, but uh, I hope you're all right. You know, I got nothing but, but positivity for you. And I think that we need to stay focused on what the system has created. The system has created, you know, the system has created, ha has created this horrible outcome for guys like Bradley. I don't dislike Bradley. I like Bradley as a person. I thought he was pretty gregarious. I thought he was pretty likable, to be honest. I liked Bradley. I still do like Bradley. I got nothing against the guy personally. When you force him to go into a situation with absolutely no accountability over his shoulder and tens of thousands of dollars right in front of him, this is what you get. There's a good one. You know what? That's a good one. Now, and by the way, for all the people of Ironton, I want you guys to share this. Now, who's been pulled over, this is a good point. How do I say your name? Yashley Dawn, Exley Dawn, right here. I wish I could pin this comment. Valid question. Anyone who's been pulled over by him and had drugs found in their car should have their cases thrown out. Everybody in Ironton, Make this notice, if you've been pulled over by Bradley Spuljarek and he found drugs in your car, everybody put that on their Facebook page. Everybody put that on their Facebook page in Ironton, Ohio. Share it everywhere. If you've been pulled over by Bradley Spuljarek or he was even on the scene, if he was even on the scene, then your case should be thrown out. Every single one of them. Everybody put this on your Facebook page in Ironton. Thank you, Michelle. I appreciate it. I just saw it. I try not to read the comments because we have so much uh, garbage that comes in here and I don't want to get distracted from my point. Uh, but Michelle said it earlier. Um, we need to, you guys need to make it go viral on Facebook in Ironton. Everybody in Ironton and Ohio needs to hear this, that if you were pulled over and Bradley Spuljarek was on the scene of your of your pullover and you were charged with a crime, then you need to make sure that you fight that because he, they could have planted drugs on you. Potential criminal 
man, I, I see you keep getting timed out today, dude. I wish you could just keep it, uh, I wish you could just keep it PG. VG, what's going on? VG, what's going on? Charlie Little Bear. He's just a little bear. He's just a little bear. He's just a little guy. So make sure that everybody uh, puts that on their Facebook page. Make sure that everybody everybody puts that on their, their, their Facebook page. That Bradley Spooljerick has been indicted, caught with 28 grams of chemicals. And if you have been pulled over and charged with any kind of crime whatsoever, then you have to now take a look at Bradley Spooljerick and consider whether or not that man, the integrity of that man, would make it so that your case would be thrown out. Doesn't matter if you're guilty or not guilty. What matters is the, the, the perspective of impropriety, the perspective, you know. Uh, my, my peaceful protesting case, uh, he'll be, his affidavit won't count now. Um, in the in the affidavit against me, you know, so so you know it is what it is, it is what it is. Anyway, I just want to jump on here. So all the people in Ironton, you know, I guess it wasn't me. I guess I didn't cause all these problems in Ironton. I guess the cops really were dealing drugs. I guess the cops are the drug dealers in Ironton, just like I said the entire time. I've never backed down from that. Uh, I, I continue to say the same story, that Bradley Spooljerick is a drug dealer and that the entire Ironton Police Department is corrupt because there's no oversight. Um, and I think that over time, we're all gonna find out more and more and more that, that um, okay, Michelle, there you go, Michelle. I added you. So um, you guys, moderators, don't block people. Just put them in timeout. Uh, I did block a few people today. I may unblock them, but I just want to have this time right now together so that we can talk about things that are really important. You know, next, I th think that in Ironton, uh, as soon as I'm able to go back there, we need to implement a new third party that is on the scene that gives total transparency on every scene. I can't wait to get back to Ironton, Ohio. I can't wait. I cannot wait. Yeah, thank you, Scrubzilla. I appreciate it. Thank you. I, I know you did. I saw it. I saw you do it. I appreciate that, actually, Tribe. Thank you. It's just, it's just so stupid. Yeah, I, I thought I added her. I thought I added her. Who didn't I add? There she is, Tabitha. There it is. So, you know, I think the bigger conversation now has to be, and you know, everybody should be asking for Pam Wagner's resignation. Pam Wagner should be resigning. You know, Pam Wagner should be absolutely resigning. She knew about Spooljerick. She knew about McKnight. You know, McKnight, how much longer are you gonna hold on before you get caught? I told you this when you guys arrested me in the back when no cameras were rolling McKnight I said to you when McKnight had me in handcuffs in the back of the community center I told him I said McKnight you're not a bad guy you're you're not a bad kid because I'm 20 years older than him I said you're not a I said listen man quit this right now or it's gonna catch up to you and you're gonna end up in a jail cell so everybody can let McKnight know I told you Evan his name's Evan McKnight I told you Evan I said to you, you're not a bad kid, but you're going to end up going to prison. You're going to end up going to prison, McKnight. That's what I said to you. Okay? And, and I warned you about that. And now it looks like you're going to go to prison, McKnight. Bradley could turn state's evidence against you, McKnight. Bradley Spooljerick could turn on you, McKnight. I told you that. You don't think that when you're facing 10 years in prison, you won't turn on other people? You bet your butt you will. You're looking at 10 years in a cage, McKnight? You don't think Bradley Spooljerick can turn on you? You might want to rethink your logic. I'm telling you, McKnight, you are not a dunce cap. You're an abusive prick. 
but you're not a dunce cap. You should quit that job, McKnight, and go do something noble with your life. Retire now, resign now, McKnight, before Bradley Spuljeric turns state's evidence against you and you go to prison. And you and Bradley better get on the same page before this all comes out. I actually have a lot of empathy for Bradley Spuljeric now that we've timed this out. Now that we've talked this out, Oh, Sean, do you have a copyright strike from me? Is that what you're freaking out about, Sean? Sean said, please lift your false copyright strike on the channel. Is that what this deal is, Sean? Sean, you can email me, deletelaws at gmail.com, and we can talk about it. We can talk about that. I don't want to... I, I, if people are making money off me and you're just another one of those people, cool. Go ahead. You know, uh, I, I didn't mean to give you... You know, actually, I got to get another guy who I gave a copyright strike to. I'm going to remove it. The people who I'm unhappy with, I'm taking to federal court. So uh, I just, you know, but send me an email, Sean, if you want to get rid of that copyright strike, delete laws at gmail.com. It's the same as my channel, just at gmail.com. So baby doll, uh, I guess you're just new to the stream here. Uh, uh, Spooge was staying at McKnight's house. Uh, well then put on the subject line, Sean Hawkins, RE on the subject line, and I'll get back to you. I don't know how, I, I, we'll talk about it when we're not here, Sean. I'm, I'm sorry you're going through that, dude. I'm not trying to end your livelihood. You know, uh, making videos about me, though, is just kind of a chicken shit thing to do. Well, I mean, dude, you, you put yourself in this position. I didn't put you here. I don't make videos about any other person. So I don't know what you're talking about. You know, you put yourself here in this bad position. I didn't do this to you. So... It's good to see everybody. Well, anyway, listen, I've been on here for two hours. I'm going to get out of here pretty quick here. What's that? I'm not mad at you, Pandy Land. I'm not mad at you at all, Pandy. Pandy Land's in the room. Sly Shy's in the room, everybody. Good to see everybody. VG, thank you. I appreciate you. Lori, good to see you. Lori, it's nice to see you. You can send me a... Susie, Susie, uh... Susie, you got like four accounts. I unblocked all of them. So can you try to be cool, Susie? Rumble's in here. Uh, YT pays Sean Hawkins Green Street. What's going on, my friend Brian? How are you, Brian? Good to see you. Uh, Pam should be resigning. Uh, her Facebook page should be inundated with "It's time for Pam to resign." She clearly isn't doing her job. Thank you, Rocco. Appreciate you, JMM. See y'all in the comment section over there of Facebook. She needs to resign. She needs to resign. She absolutely. Good to see you, Leanne. Thanks for coming. You are, Susie, I unblocked all of your accounts. You have several. I unblocked all of them. Good to see you, Jack Lawless. Thanks for coming by. Citizens Broadcast Cooperative. Good to see you. Melanie, nice to see you. Bruce, thank you, sir. Michelle, nice to see you. Tabitha, DJ, nice to see you. Uh, uh, Kristen Tella, I agree. I think Chad Gu must have had some kind of insight to this. And Chad Gu needs, Tom, what's going on? Where's Waldo? Where's Waldo? Okay. Anyway, I've been on here forever and a day. I will get the flock out of here. Do me a favor, guys. When we drop this video, come back into this video in the comment section and beat these trolls up. Do not let them dominate this comment section. You trolls are not dominating the comment section. You're getting your asses kicked. My people are kicking the trolls' asses. You guys look stupid in the comments. You're not winning. Um, lively, um, lively report, Lively. So Lively, listen, I got a bunch of screenshots today from Deborah Lively and you're in the screenshots. So I'm not really sure, uh, I haven't seen, uh, let me check and see if, if I can show you a screenshot lively. So, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty rough. It's pretty rough lively. It's pretty rough lively, some of the things. I, I just got some screenshots from you lively. That, that are you in the comment section on a troll channel. I want to actually pull them up though. Hey, Chad, thank you. God bless you. Thank you, Chad. I appreciate that, dude. Thanks a lot. Means a lot. Okay, let's let's try Jeebus. We'll try Jeebus before we get out of here. Let's try Jeebus. I, he always has great information. Let's just, I'm, I got another six hours of driving here, so. Let's see. Let me, let me try him again. I'm going to try you again. I'm going to try you again, Tim. I'm, I'm looking for Deborah's email with Lively in them. 
and uh, she was lively. She was really upset with you. Um, she was really upset with you. So I'm, I'm looking for that email from Deborah. I want to... Uh, here they are. So I don't know what this is going to show exactly here. They were still downloading, and there they are now. Uh, yeah, Deborah. Oh, these are the receipts from Deborah. So we have uh, nine hundred fifty dollars raised for Deborah, and then um, Deborah, send me those screenshots that you said you have of Lively. I want to address this and see if it was him or somebody else because Lively is a pretty good supporter. I just want to double check on this. I just want to double check it because you guys listen we you know just like they have people in our chats and they have people on our channel we have people on those troll channels we have people in their discord we have people monitoring everything people are saying in there you know it's like uh i got a good old i got a friend on here i got a friend on here used to be a major supporter of mine comes by now and again says some nice things in here but the screenshots i've got of him in the comments of the troll channels just yesterday and the day before are just horrific it's like I just don't really understand that. You know, why would you come here and then go to a troll channel and say terrible things? I don't get it. I, I just all drama and garbage and it's not working on the system that needs to be changed. The system itself needs to be changed. You know, that's, that's the thing is the system itself is broken. You know, so as long as the system is broken, we're never gonna get justice. It'll never happen. As long as you continue to put, um, uh, guys like Bradley Spooljarek uh, in charge and no, no, no third party over the top of him to make sure that he's not doing things wrong, then, you know, you're going to have corruption and cheating and lying and scandal. Uh, Jonathan Mitchell, love your email, dude. Thank you. I'm just, um, so here's the, okay. So I'm waiting on Deborah's email. I just want to I want to address this issue because I really love Lively reports. Lively comes in and offers a lot to the room. Uh, if he really hates me on the side, then I just want to know that. You know, I, I want to know if someone actually hates me. And then, okay, let's try Tim one more time. Who's the rogue moderator? Hey moderators, don't uh, don't time people out for having a difference of opinion. There's uh, there's people saying there's a rogue moderator, and they always say that. But I'm just asking the mods. I, I'm super grateful for your help, but just try not to uh, time people out unless they really deserve it. You know what I mean? Um, I'm gonna call Tim right now. Uh, Deborah, get those over to me, please. I want to see um, I want to see what what exactly was said here. So now I'm gonna call Tim Lyons back, everybody. I'm gonna call Tim Lyons back right here. Let's see if, everybody hit the like button if you would, please. Hey, Jim, up, buddy? hey Tim, how you doing? Uh, man, I just got home from work, got a little shower. Uh, so, the big question that we have that we want that maybe you can look into this, um, the Ironton Police Department have an agreement with Belfont Hospital as far as their okay. random drug screening. Okay, Lively, I appreciate that. I didn't think it was huge. I haven't seen any of the receipts yet. So thank you, Lively Report. I appreciate that, man. I really enjoy it. And by the way, you know, uh, I I am a, I'm not a religious person, but I certainly live by a Judeo-Christian values. That's for sure. And I've read the Bible a couple times. So, um, so uh, what were you saying, Tim? What was the question you had? Okay, so the bargaining agreement with the FOP for Ironton is that they do random drug screens through Belfont Hospital. That's a hospital here in uh, but they're no longer existent. They're, the hospital's been closed down for what a little over a year, maybe two. And uh, we want to know have you updated that. Are the officers being drug screened? Right. 
And so how long has that hospital been closed down? So you guys make sure that uh, you, the moderators don't time people out unless they are absolutely egregious. Charlie, Charlie, okay, Charlie, look, there he, sure. just, Charlie. Um, there he is. Charlie, there he is. There he is, Charlie. Yeah, they turned the hospital into an in-house treatment facility for Alex, for addicts, and uh, it's been closed for two years. So there's been no random drug testing for cops. So Spuljeric, that's could, what we want to know. You know, are they still um, have they updated that information because they're and are they being drug screened still? Because that's the hospital that they're supposed to be going to for the random drug screens, and it's being closed. Right. So there's been no. So Bradley Spuljeric could be. On, on methamphetamines right now. Could be. Yeah. And, you know, and I, you know, these pictures that I have of of Spuljeric and Akers posing like gangster thugs in front of their car. You know, keep in mind that Akers is the drug uh, interdiction officer. That you know, he's the guy when he pulls people over for a turn signal. You know, he searches their vehicle. <laughs> He's the, he's the guy that can, he's a psychic apparently because, you know, he just has indicators that tells him that you have drugs in your car and, uh, <laughs> and this is Akers. He's the one who just decides they can pretextually pull you over. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. He told, he told Spol Jarek when we asked for a super, so Spol Jarek was the one to come on scene. So. You know, how, how are you supposed to, how can you expect a, a supervising officer to to hold somebody, you know, hold an officer under him if they're buddy buddies and they're posing, you know, like, and they're living together and, and stuff like this. If these dudes are all buddies. Nobody's holding nobody accountable. Right. And so where do you put that picture up, Tim? So I can I can advise people where to go see the picture of, of uh, Bradley yeah. Spuljarek looking like a gangster. I sent that to you. I texted it to you uh, last night. Um, but you can go on my channel. There's a video um, called Ironton Police Department. Let's uh, let's go over a few things. I think it's called. So that's on Jeebus Crisp. The channel's called Jeebus Crisp. Yeah, and it's a thumbnail on one of my videos. Okay, so one of the thumbnails, and then uh, text it to this number that I just called you on and I'll show people but I want you guys to go by Jeebus Crisp on YouTube he put up a thumbnail of of Spool Jarek. who's he posing with McKnight no that's Akers he's posing with so Akers is the drug intake guy and so Spool Jarek's posing with him and then the intake of drugs was uh was uh you know he towed our vehicle and he said that uh he, he was going to tow our vehicle so he can do inventory Right, and Spoljeric was the one that said to uh, to Fouch, "Well, Sarah doesn't want to cooperate, so her ass can go to jail too." Those are his exact words. Wow. And so this is what you're dealing with, these buddy buddies, you know, this <laughs> good old boy. So then, the person who's supposed to be in charge to help Spoljeric make the right decisions, they're best buddies. Yeah, I mean, yeah, from what it looks like. So then how are you ever going to have accountability if these guys don't have an, an oath to uphold, they have their rankings to uphold? It's just not going to be possible. Right. When you ask to speak to a supervisor, you expect somebody, you know, with a little bit more of a head on his shoulders, and you know, he's going to come and, and uh, if, the, if the office is wrong, then the supervisor can call him on it, but that's not what happened. He... You know, he opened the car door, he spoke to me for two seconds, he slammed the door in my face and said, I hope you get an expensive effing lawyer, you know. So, uh, I guess what I want to say is, well, Jarek, is that I, I hope you get an expensive effing lawyer, buddy. Well, Tim, Sorry. you got a, you got a personal you got a personal axe to grind with this guy for treating you oh, so yeah. terribly, stalking you, harassing you. You know, it's it's just incredible that this happened. And then, you know, all the people that Bradley has arrested for drugs, all those people now have a legitimate uh, concern that their case could be tainted. Oh, what if he planted it? <laughs> you know? Well, we know how we he know go he's got... We know, he's, we know he's got drugs on him now, so, I mean, who's to say that he's not planting drugs in people's car? 
That's exactly correct, Jeebus. That's exactly correct. You know, every single person who's got a drug charge from Spiljaric in the past two years, in the past three years, your case may still be going through. And you know what? You have a legitimate case now to say that everything is corrupted and you should not be charged and the case should be thrown out. Who, who charged uh, Sean DeLong? Do you know? Who are the arresting officers? I thought it was Spooch. Yeah, I don't know about that. I don't know. I know who Sean DeLong is, but I don't know who um, arrested him. Okay. So then everybody, can you guys find out who arrested Sean DeLong? Because I think I remember finding out that it was Spooch who arrested Sean DeLong that found all those drugs on him. Someone has to get a message to Sean DeLong that if Bradley Spooljarek was part of the team of police officers who arrested you, those charges could be thrown out. Uh, someone's saying it was blank and shit. So I'm I completely agree. It's, it's absolutely disgusting. And and don't the Blankenship brothers, don't they work underneath of Spooge? And then, yeah, and then you have the two brothers, you know. <laughs> One pulls you over and you mouth off to him, and two days later his brother's going to pull you over and retaliate. I mean, that's it's just, wow. I have a picture of the two Blankenship brothers I'm going to send you to. I want you to see it. Yeah, send it over. I, I text you here. I said here on your text message. Send it to this phone I have so I can show the the images right here. You okay. know, it's I'll just have to get off the phone to send those to you. But uh, oh, okay. Well, yeah, that's uh, that's a very uh, important question that needs to be answered. Is are they still being drug screened? Because the hospital that it says that they go to for random drug screens is no longer operational for it two has years. Been open for, uh, close to two years, I'd say. Tabitha put in the, the chat that it's been closed for two years. So we don't know, you know, look, and let's, you know, I, I, everybody knows that I don't like cops, right? Everybody knows that it's no big secret. I've not made it a secret. I've announced it, why I hate cops, but not the human being. I've done this over and over and over, but we do have to consider whether or not Spooge has a methamphetamine drug problem. That has to be considered. Well, I would question the Blankenship brothers too. And I'm not making any kind of accusations, but I would definitely question, um, no. <laughs> yeah, they should be drug tested. They should all be, and they should all be drug tested for steroids. They should all be That's tested for too. human growth hormone. I'm not talking about testosterone therapy for, for hormone replacement therapy. I'm so, you know, and, and let me just make this clear with everybody. There is testosterone for men for hormone replacement therapy, and then there's steroids. I don't really know a lot about steroids because I'm gonna educate myself on it, but there's there's D bull and Tremdable and 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 there's 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 Buffalo uh, uh, steroids. There's all kinds of steroids that have nothing to do with testosterone replacement therapy. There's a big difference between those two. You can take pills that will make you Arnold size. I mean, gigantic. And those are the uh, just look at the guys that work for the for the Lawrence County Sheriff's Department. Half, if not most of those guys are on steroids. Get him, I went to school with a couple of those guys, and, and they beefed up really fast when they became deputies. Really? He's here, Charlie. He's up here, Charlie. He's up here, Charlie. He, there he is, Charlie. Charlie. The women inmates in there horribly, just asking any female that's ever been to jail in Ironton how the male officers treat them. Yeah. It's disgusting. They they have game they play where they write down, you know, they go through the names of the female inmates and uh, whether or not they think they can sleep with that one. And, you know. As they're going to jail, they're deciding if they can sleep uh, with the while chick? they're there, yeah. Yeah, the, the, the mug shots when they get booked in, those guys, they stand around and, you know, go through the female mug shots. And, you know, they, <laughs> I've seen this with my own eyes. Wow. I, I prefer my women when they're all done up in their short little black dress. I prefer them when they're still coherent and can invite yeah. me and, and are not uh, flirting with me so that they can try to get out of jail or prison. You know, I prefer my women on their own two feet. You know, me personally. <laughs> well, these guys, they, they got a thing for addicted, you know, women that, that are helpless and uh, they, you know, <laughs> it's, it's sick, it's just really sick. Yeah, it sounds but like they they do this, and they um they also I, I know a couple of girls that. After
being released from jail had a sheriff's deputy, and I'll go ahead and put his name out there. His name's Spazzoli. Spazzoli. Uh, hit her up out, you know, outside of jail and says, "You remember me? I'm the one that uh, I'm the one that uncuffed you." Trying to talk her into coming to an hotel room where him and two other deputies supposedly had a hall pass from their wives and offered her a thousand dollars to come sleep with all three of them. And when she turned them down later that night at about four in the morning. Spazzoli hit her up and said, it's just me now. The other guys are gone. And I wonder what would have happened to her if she would have fell for that and showed up there thinking it was just him. Did you record the conversation? No, this was years ago, Chili. Okay. They need to record all conversations. Spazzoli, huh? You know, and I'm not even in contact with the girl, but, but I was there when she was receiving the messages. You know, they were laughing about it and uh, showing it to me and stuff. Wow. Wow. So this is what you're dealing with. You know, we tried to tell you and... There he is, Charlie. He's up there, Charlie. He's up there, Charlie. He's up there. Charlie, he's up there. There he is. Get him, get him. Oh, he got away, Charlie. He got away. He's in the back seat, Charlie. Charlie hates flies. Our very close female friend was arrested by uh, Blankenship, and we went to jail. A male officer strip searched her, and I didn't think that that was even that loud. I don't think I don't think strip searching should be a thing. Number one, but then number two, it certainly shouldn't be a someone of the of the opposite sex looking at your kibbles and bits as you're forced to, to bend over. Disgusting, Tim. Disgusting. And when Sarah went to jail, there they absolutely humiliated her. They, you know, I don't want to go into the details, but you well, know, she wasn't in there on any drug charges. She was in there for keeping her mouth shut for not telling them my information. Wow. And that was it. And she was, she had to bend over for him six, seven times. And she oh, was, that's going to be in the civil rights case that we're going to work together on the paperwork for that. You know, we're going to read that paperwork and do that paperwork together, Tim. And that's coming, man. That's coming. Don't, 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 don't you worry, man. It's coming. I give you my word. We're going to work on that together. And we're really going to make sure we, we get them because this will be the third or this will be the fourth. Mine, Freeman's, and then yours will be the third federal civil rights lawsuit that going against uh, Lawrence County, uh, Jeff Lawless and the Ironton Police Department. So we're gonna, we're gonna push it. We're gonna push it. All right. All right, Tim, anything, well, anything else? You, Chili, man. You're our voice, so. I'm just here to help. I'm just here to help. Anything else you wanna add, Tim, before I cut you loose here? And just stay safe out there, man. Oh, I'm gonna stay safe, man. I'm definitely gonna stay safe. All right, buddy. Love you, man. I'll talk all to right. you real soon, Love all right? You, Later, Tim. Bye. That's Jeepus Crisp, everybody. Make sure you go over there and you, uh, and he's gonna send me some pictures right now. So um, he's gonna send me those pictures. So look forward to seeing these here. Uh, this is gonna be, uh, this, this is a treat, some of these photos. So I hope you guys enjoy this. Um, uh, the pictures of these cops acting like gangsters and then it turns out that they actually are. Oh, Charlie, there he is. Here he is, Charlie. He's over here. Where's my Where's my fly gun? Where's that Where's that saltomatic, Charlie? He just was flying around right here, buddy. I just seen him. He's here somewhere, Charlie. I just there he is, Charlie. He's here, Charlie. Charlie, come here. Come here, Charlie. Right here. Come here. There he is, right there. On the window. Did you get him, Charlie? Get him, Charlie. Get him, Charlie. Get him. Get him, Charlie. Get him. Get him, Charlie. He's up. There he is. There he is. There he is, Charlie. There he is, Charlie. Get him. Get him, Charlie. Get him. Good boy, Charlie. That's a good boy, Charlie. That's a good boy. Good boy. Got him, Charlie. Okay, Charlie, go to your pillow. 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 There you go. Go to your pillow. Good boy, Charlie. That fly was driving me nuts. So, um, yeah, I don't have Messenger on this phone over here, so I'm sorry. Oh, here they are. I got them right here. For, and this is from Jeebus Crisp, everybody. This is from Jeebus. So he just sent me those over. That's Bradley and Akers posing like they're thug gangsters. So that's what Bradley was posing like. And we don't know if Bradley was strung out on meth or not. We do have to give him that opportunity. 
we do have to give them the opportunity because remember, you know, listen, uh, you know, w th there's another picture of him posing like gangsters uh, for the camera. You know, they're, they're doing these GQ poses. It's really a joke. It's just a joke. It's, it's just bad. It's just bad all the way around. And so, you know, we have to consider whether or not Bradley is battling a drug problem. And, you know, you know, I have the same compassion for Bradley's pool Jarek as I do for Deborah Rogers, as I do for Sarah Page. I have the same compassion. I have the same caring for the human well-being of another human being as I do for my mother, my sister, my brother, my cousin, my, 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 my lover, my ex-girlfriend, my everybody. Anybody who is a human being is worthy of redemption is worthy of compassion and we must consider all parts of their process as being a human substantive process that we have to take a look at every different angle and Bradley Spool Jarek very well could have been strung out on methamphetamines as he was dealing drugs and doing the wrong thing and we do have to consider that just like we have to consider that for every other person who is forced into a criminal injustice system. And I don't like cops. I like people. And so we need to take a look at that and consider exactly the things I'm saying here now. Or we're not a truly compassionate people. And we need to be. We need to be a truly compassionate people. And that's the most important part is that we don't lose our humanity as we go down this, this long road of, of trying to change what can only be considered a absolute corrupted system. There's no other way to see it. There's no other way. And that's what we have to look at. We have to consider that. If we're, if we're contributing to a bad system, you know, because as much as I don't like cops, as much as I don't respect uh, Bradley for signing up to be a pig, that doesn't mean that he's not a person going through some really bad stuff. So, with that being said. All right, I've been on here for three hours. I got another couple more hours of driving here, so I'm going to get the flock out of here. Thanks for the super chats. Uh, thanks for the donation. Someone sent me a donation. Thank you. Uh, appreciate that, man. God bless you. I appreciate that. I'm not going to stop doing what I'm doing. I'm going to continue to push and force the issue that the system itself is bad, that people are not individually bad, that people sign up to a corrupted system where they're put in positions where they have a oh, Euclid officer tyrant Michael Amott trial in recess tomorrow, 9 a.m. Jury's expecting for the closing arguments so that Euclid uh, Ohio police officers on trial. Chevy just popped that up there. Thank you, Chevy. Appreciate that. Uh, no problem, Marcy. Um, Marcy, I saw a comment that was pinned on one of the trolls channels um, from you. So I saw it. I'll send it to you. You know, maybe you didn't mean anything by it. But when you go participate with people who are accused of rape and uh, accused of, of beating up people, uh, you know, it, 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 when they when they premiere your comment, Marcy, then someone took a screenshot of that and they sent it to me. I'll send it to you, Marcy. I'll send it to you. Uh, you, you were on a troll channel. So I'm just telling you, I got the screenshot. I'll send it to you. So, you know, everything people do, I get a report on, which I can't cover all the reports, but I do just say it out loud, you know, Um, Colm Cause Bay, it's the first time I've ever seen you in the room, man. But, uh, yeah, you know, we're on the verge of changing things. Like, like, you know, we're on the, we're on the, we're on the verge of changing things. And so that's, that's what you're seeing. We are right on the verge of change. No, I just, I just say everything out loud. There's nothing I don't say that's not transparent. You know, I do keep some things quiet because I don't want to hurt anybody. But, you know, when I hear these things or I see these things, I just say them out loud because then it's been said out loud. And then later we can say, oh, well, we did talk about that out loud later. So anyway, uh, go to Chad's goo and ask Chad goo how long he knew. Uh, go to Facebook and talked about Pam Wagner. She should be resigning any, any day now. Um, and, uh, you know, let's not stop the investigation into um, in, into what we're seeing in front of us. It, you know, people will show you who they are. Just give them enough time. 
And so we get to see now that what's really going on in Ironton wasn't that I went there and messed up their town, that they are living in absolute tyranny that the people who, who, who are supposed to protect and uphold justice become corrupted because of a bad system. I'm going to get the fuck out of here. Thanks for coming with me. I appreciate it. Just remember, under any circumstances, no matter what the situation, we don't stop. We don't stop. Put it right there. We don't stop. 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 We don't mother can stop. We don't stop. When they quit, we're still going. Goo new. Goo new. Goo new. That should be the catchphrase. Goo new. G U E K N. Goo new. Goo, I think you knew. I hope you didn't, but I think you did. Goo new. We don't stop. All right, I'll see you guys on the next one. Later, Gator.